Mm -hmm. I don't know, Kyle. I'm hoping something is working. Did you change something? <laughs> Did you change? I don't know, Kyle. I'm hoping something is working. Quit repeating yourself. Oh, yeah, it's working. Good. I don't know, Kyle. I hope it's working. Arch, quit being a broken-ass NPC, you little shit. That would be a good time to insert an ad. Yeah, might as well. Fuck him. Fuck <laughs> God, did the chat miss my anti-Korean rhetoric? Ah, tragedy. Oh, well. Next time we'll get him with more racism later. Next time, next time. So... We've got to address the Alex Jones thing. A little, little bit. Little, little bit. Now, Alex Jones is not a video game. Um, though he, could he be. probably should be. He's been in memes he and really... video games. Yes, there you go. That's 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 the sliver of a justification. I'm, <laughs> I'm helping use you as much as I can. <laughs> to uh, to drag this topic into our uh, like popular media and general idiocy kind of uh, cast thing here. Uh, because Alex Jones is a meme, and he is a he is a walking meme, and this is me too. I've never really watched Alex Jones. Like it, it, this this American radio host thing is something that I just do not understand. This is culturally alien to me. What uh, about you, Kyle? It isn't to me. So when I was a little kid growing up, uh, I used to go to my with my dad to work. Like when I was three, because I always wanted to be with my dad. We had our own like business or whatever. So we'd drive around and we'd be pump septic tanks out and out in the out in the outback in, of Minnesota, you know. And he would always use the radio all the time. And there were radio hosts that he would listen to. One of those people I remember growing up listening to as a child was this guy named Rush Limbaugh, who was really old. I remember that. That name uh, rings a bell. Well, that's about it. He's like a big radio host dude. He's dead, apparently. But I remember that. And I also remember, like, the Garibaldi dude from Babylon 5. He was he was also a radio host guy. But yeah, no, that's a Rush thing. Rush Limbaugh's Wikipedia page says that he was an American talk show host. <laughs> He's I'm, dead now. Yep. <laughs> um, I'm thinking so, probably. But yes, this is the thing, and it wasn't just him, because I remember other people that were working, like, excavators and stuff, uh, would also listen to them in their trucks, too. So, like, this is a thing. I hear this occasionally. I remember when people would open their door at the truck stop, I'd also hear, like, Rush Limbaugh's voice or some other radio uh, talk show guy. It's just a thing. It's because in America, you have such vast distances to travel and to go anywhere in this hellhole, right? So you gotta drive for fucking hours. And so people listen to the radio. It's just a thing. And these are, um, you know, this this is a thing too. Like from what I understand, this is a working class kind of entertainment. Mm -hmm. like I think the uh, Californian progressives do not listen to this much. Uh, I think there are different radios. Like there are like sort of left leaning ones as well, but it depends on like the area too. I mean, you you could tune in, so it's like people don't have to listen to those stations if they didn't want to. But I believe but there are left to, ones. Um, to Alex Jones at all? Was that a guy you heard about? Uh, I remember my dad like listened to him once or twice and was like, he, he thought he was like some sort of comedian because he was always kind of crazy. Oh, he is <laughs> so, okay. It's like I, I would classify Alex Jones as a comedian more so than anything else. Yeah, I'd say Hell, so. I think. I think he himself classifies himself as basically entertainment, but you know, details. But basically, this is to establish that um, we don't really have any dogs in this fight. Like, I certainly don't. And this this entire gentleman. So a little bit of background in case you've somehow managed to miss this thing. Um, Alex Jones is now a, a conspiracy theorist. Oh, you know that. Conspiracy theorist, meaning that he hasn't been proven correct yet. Um, but he apparently said some pretty spicy things about some shooting over in America. You know, those happen every weekend. And he'd claim that it hadn't happened or something. And that was fairly silly because, you know, there was pretty overwhelming evidence that, yes, it had happened. And this led... In di like this led then, apparently they allege, to harassment of some of the victims. Now they're not accusing Alex Jones of having harassed anyone, nor interestingly are they accusing him of having directed the harassment. 
And as far as I know, the people who actually committed it, well, at least one of them is in jail right now. So what they're apparently pushing against Alex Jones is some kind of defamation lawsuit. It's actually been difficult to figure out precisely because so the, the, the literal reason is is def defamation, as far as I've been able to tell. Like that is what it says on the um you know the legal proceedings, etc. Now, my definition of defamation is apparently rather different than the American one, because that seems to suggest that you must have said something defamatory about someone rather than having uh, quote unquote directed harassment towards them, but details. Like I'm not gonna get into the legalese of this all really, because I'm sure it's complicated. But he was convicted, and this was the, I think this is the second, the second round around, because he appealed the first conviction, where he was convicted to pay, what was it, $46 million or something. And now he has been convicted to pay $965 million. So just shy of a billion dollars. That is, uh, that's a bit ridiculous. Bob. A billion, a, a billion, a billion dollars. A billion. Like, why the, does this man even I, have a billion dollars? Of course not. Like, here, um, <laughs> just keep, keep that link you've got up now handy, and I'm going to send you another one for context here. So this okay. one here, uh, this was over BP, you know, British Petroleum. Settling for the Deepwater Horizon disaster. You know, the oil platform that fucking exploded? Mm -hmm. They settled for four billion. Yeah, this is uh like I mean a billion's already out of out of proportion to the point of absurd yeah. absurdity. The fact that it exceeded like a million is already ridiculous. Because to be honest, the damages are negligible at best like okay somebody was bothered like, but he, the reality is people are going to be bothered like he didn't do anything like like it he like, didn't pay a cent really <laughs> put it putting this into perspective right they they've judged that what alex jones did which in the worst case scenario i think um like so, people other people was harassing these people who are suing him and apparently one of the families had to have to move and is now living secretly till in New York or something. Okay, that sucks. But is is this a crime equivalent to one fourth of a Deepwater Horizon disaster that killed 11 people and caused the single largest environmental disaster in the entirety of US history? Like, are these two at any point equivalent? No, not in this light. Like but also, I think there's a lot more going on here, too, because I think the Hillary Clintons oh, yes. are involved, oh, if yes. I remember right. And whenever they're involved, it's more like I think they use some clip of him and some sort of, I don't know, fucking propaganda piece or something. But either way, because they said he was guilty or that he did a thing, that means they have to win because, well, they can't ever be seen losing. Against the, especially a lower, a lower man. Like if you're not part of the, you know, oligarchic families, you are, you are an enemy. Well, that, that's the thing too. So the reason why they are doing this is to shut him up. And they, they have literally said as much as well. Like they have actually said it. So um, I'll send you a link here. And if you can just control F, um this it should jump you uh, to it so uh the the um the def the uh, oh god english language complicated legalese the attorney for the accuser so for the the damaged families said quote to take the bullhorn away and to take the first step towards taking that bullhorn away from all the others who have it or all the others who might want it uh, All the others who believe they can profit or fear and misinformation. The issue is, is who who is the arbiter of misinformation? What is and what isn't? 
Well, it's whoever runs the courts, and, uh, well, that would be the U.S. government at the moment. See, the problem with giving anyone the power to arbiter, be an arbiter of that is a bit ridiculous. Uh, we've got another one here. I'll, uh, you can control F this one, too. Jesus Christ, how uh, much where... research into this crap do you do? This is a... <laughs> A little bit. And this, again, this, again, is the the attorney for the victims, right, saying, um, I ask that with your verdict, you not only take Alex Jones's platform away, you make certain he will not rebuild that platform. That is punishment. That is deterrence. Let us kill this man and his livelihood because we don't like him. Yeah, and again, they are stating very clearly, very, very... Like, they're, they're not being subtle about it. Like, you can't really misconstrue this. No, you can't. You really can't. <laughs> like, no, like they are doing this to shut him the fuck up. This is wrong. Like, this is actually, like, tyranny. Like, the, that, is, that is kind of what this is. And again, like, the, the punishment here, a billion dollars outlandish he shouldn't even be paying I, anything to be honest he well, didn't okay, do anything let's, let's assume let's assume the victims are right in everything they say right let's assume they were all harassed let's assume they were forced to move and some of them now have to have secret addresses right let's assume all of that is true and let's assume somehow that alex jones is responsible for it right give him everything okay okay Sure, like that's that's a lot of uh, it's a lot of mental trauma. It's uh, costs uh, incurred with moving. It's you know damages to their familiar relationship. You know they have to move away from friends and family. I'll give them all of this, and okay, may, give them the first settlement, say forty million dollars. Right, it's a fuck ton of money. That is a fuck ton of money, but it is within Alex Jones's capability to pay probably not out of pocket but that is something that a major name like him could probably pay like in the most extreme scenario where we assume that everything they say is correct 40 million bucks and we went from that to a billion dollars yeah i like, think that is like that means they'll just raise the amount to an amount that will kill you because the yeah. reality is, in the modern society and in the modern world, if you're poor or if you're homeless, you're dead to society. This is a problem like they, our society faces to this day. They're basically killing them. They increase the punishment by 25 times. Man, that's awful. <laughs> like, in, I, in no I, universe <laughs> is this reasonable. Like, even if you hate Alex Jones's gut, in no universe is this reasonable. And the, like, everyone I've seen that genuinely hates Alex Jones, and everybody I've seen that's talked about this who hates him, their only argument is that, uh, here, I'll, I'll send you, I'll send you this one here. This is a, a tweet from uh, a chick, Jen Pizaki, who I believe was the uh, ex spokesperson for the Biden White House. Let me just uh, look that up real I quick. I think so, so actually. So she I'm has not that... like talking out of my ass here. She has that face of incompetence that I'm very uh, accustomed White to. House press secretary for Biden in 2021. Yes, that is her. And hmm. know what she's saying here. The damage Alex Jones has done to the lives of these families is horrific. Nearly a billion dollars doesn't solve their pain. Well, first and foremost, bullshit. Like, you can inflict a lot of pain for me for, on me for a billion fucking dollars. But two, but also true that the end of Infowars would be a public service. That's, the thing is, they're shutting down. The thing is, is Alex Jones, like, new stuff? Like, do I believe it? Would I ever? No, I don't. But the problem is, it doesn't really matter if you believe it or not believe it, or if it's true or not true. The fact that you're silencing someone's voice is already too far. The fact that you're doing so by literally killing them is too far. You should not do that. And the people that do this need to be held, re need to be actually investigated and held responsible. Because what they're doing is committing a crime. And, and that's the thing. Everyone I've seen who's talking about this on the negative, nobody's arguing that this is a fair punishment <laughs> not a single one is saying that oh yeah a billion dollars is entirely fair for having to move to new york which to be fair is pretty horrific but still who has it's to all move about to destroying york? alex jones 
This country's big. You don't have to move to New York. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, that's moving so, to New York. Like, that's a pretty fucking harsh punishment. Like, that's a pretty terrible punishment. Maybe like, that place is a cesspit. Overpriced, cancer ridden, fucking disease, fucking crime hellhole. It's basically like Chicago, but, you know, baby version. Mm hmm. But it is, again, it, it is the takeaway of platform. And you also. We've also got to mention the the system here because this this was the court case. This one here that just happened was the court case where Alex Jones's attorney apparently managed to hand over two years worth of phone communications without having been asked to do so. And initially, apparently, like there were all kinds of insane rumors about what was on his phone, like from from kitty porn to terrorist shit and everything. And I'm just sitting there like, okay, your attorney accidentally handed over your your kitty porn stash, which you have stored on your mobile phone. This sounds like some fed op <laughs> bullshit. Like feds? Doesn't it just? Because the, here's the reality, guys. Like, the feds do anything. They touch your stuff. Of course there's going to be kitty porn on it all of a sudden. You know why? Because they're there to take you down. The government isn't here to protect you. It's here to control you. And always has been. That's the whole reason why we have the balance of powers against the government. Is because we're trying to keep it in check. Problem is, is our government's grown bloated and corrupt beyond control. That chat is going accidentally. Yeah, no. It's... There's no accident here. This it is, was it was a pinch fucking suspect is all I'm saying. Just like there was no accident when fucking what's his nuts did a flip off his bed, you know. Like these things aren't accidents. These things were done by our government. There is no, there's no maybe. There's no conspiracy theory. They they happened. <laughs> they happened right in front of us, and they do it in such a way that we know they did it, and they mock us. <clears throat> Isn't that and, fun? Um, I also want to point out. I want to point out here a little, a, a big, big, big deal. Um, the the first round of the court system, right? He was the the, the judge was a Democrat activist. I don't know. I'll send you a, send you a picture of her little profile account here to uh, hammer home the fucking point, right? You can show that one off. That is a face that. Uh... Oh. I don't feel that is well. the face, yes. And <laughs> her entire Twitter timeline is full of Democrat activist stuff. Like she went to a uh, Cesare Chavez rally, a, a fairly well known communist subversive. Um, her entire like election point for being elected to the court is that it was pr protecting victims. She doesn't talk about justice at any point. It is actually. Um, let's see if we can... I, I can find... Yeah, yeah, no, I can find it here. Right, this is her uh, campaign flyer. I'm going to send that over to you, too. Oh, God, I love having good internet, so I can actually just send pictures without it taking five minutes. But, right, her campaign flyer here. Protect victims in court. Take guns away from abusers. End discrimination. No, not a single point of her campaign flyer for uh, like uh, the uh, the judge says anything about justice or you know fair fair process or anything like that. It's just a list of progressive talking points. Well, there is no justice in these people's lives. Justice, the only what justice is to them is when the their enemies are destroyed. That is what justice is to these people. Pretty much. But she was a hardcore, straight-up advocate. She even, there was even um, the case here, I'll send you on this link here, where where the judge decides from her pulpit to chew out the defendant in a court case. Like, at that point, just walk out the fucking door. Like, the the court case is over. In, if anything, this is the point where you sue for mistrial immediately because the judge has already made up her mind and it is blatantly obvious that that is what she has done. Like, actual courts is not supposed to be like Judge Judy on television 
if the if the judge is chewing you out, mistrial. You do yep. you are not getting a fair trial. The judge doesn't chew you out. It's not his job. No, it is not. Or in this case, her job. But yeah, no, she failed her duty. She should be she should pay for her crimes. There there needs to be real justice, chant, for people like the bad judges. Bad judges need to suffer for what they've done. Real jail time. But the problem is, is these corrupt judges, these are the enemies of the people. They can do whatever they want. They can get away with whatever they want. There will be no real I justice have, here. I have a great deal of hatred for the modern day judicial system. And again, like I am of the opinion that if judges put down a, a, a wrongful verdict, they, they get the entire verdict on themselves at, at this point. Because there are so many cases of them just handing down shit and just be playing gods, playing petty tyrants. Like, oh, I hate it. I they hate are it. gods. These things, these things literally, these things stand above the law and there's nothing you can do about it. They can, they can but destroy your life in an instant. Worse yet, worse yet was the second round of this. Where this was the previous judge, so he appealed it, obviously. I, fuck, I'd, I'd sue for mistrial, but, you know, he appeals. And in the next one, he didn't actually get a trial at all. Because early on in the trial, uh, the judge handed down... I, I can't remember the technical term, but basically it is... Um, Normally, normally this is done if the defendant refuses to show up to court. You know, if the defendant says like, no, I'm just, I'm going to ignore all this, I'm going to stay at home, then the judge has the authority to say, okay, in absentia, I'm going to rule on this for the defendant, straight up, you know? And that is only done in extreme circumstances. But the judge did that because she was of the opinion that Alex Jones had not acted in good enough faith in discovery. She was of the opinion that he had acted in contempt of court somehow, and so she skipped the entire legal proceedings, practically, and just moved on to damages. Straight up. Yep. That is, uh... That is, again... I don't even know what you do in this case. Like, if we had a real, you know, legal system... <laughs> She would. Uh, you you, you she'd sigh be off. and you grin and you bear it. That's that's all. And then you you appeal. That is literally all you can do. Yep. There's nothing. There's nothing more to be said here. No. Like again, the the literally the judge declared that the the case was was over, like before it had even started. I wish I wish I'd remembered the goddamn technical term for this because there. This is a thing that can happen, but again, it is used in extreme circumstances, like when somebody just refuses to show up to court, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, it's a miscarriage of justice, and uh, it's sad to see. But that's but all you can do. But now he is going to appeal, and there is no way it's not going to be granted. Like, <laughs> Surely. Like, surely, like, because this will then be sent up the, the ladder. Ah, uh, yeah, thank you, chat. Default judgment. Thank you. Yeah, that was a default judgment. Mm. But yeah, this will be kicked up the ladder, and they'll just billion dollars in a defamation suit. Then they'll laugh for a bit, and they'll grant the appeal, and this will then be kicked up. Now, I... Okay, so he's been through two rounds now, so is there's a third round now before the Supreme Court? Is that is that how that works? I don't know how the legal system works. It's a fucking mess. What do you want from me? Because <laughs> I think in Norway, let me see here. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure in in Norway there's four courts. Uh, Lagman, uh, or is there three? No, there's there's three, isn't it? Yeah, no, I think there's three. So I'm presuming there's going to be three in the US, maybe? Because uh, there's... dist Because he's gone through the, the district court now. So after appeals, he goes to the Supreme Court. 
Okay. I believe. But yeah, he's he's that is where this is going to end up because all of these lesser judges, they have no. Uh, it goes up to an appeal at court. Yeah, no, they, they will be an appeal at court. Uh, but yes, these these lesser judges, they have no responsibility. There, there, there is no legal ramification for any of these. They can say and they can do whatever they fucking want. Whatever they goddamn want. And then it kicks up to the Supreme Court where this will actually probably be uh, district appeals to Supreme. Yes, thank you, Chad. This this will then be go to the Supreme Court, where again the problem with the Supreme Court too is it's it's become a political tool in the U.S. where you you look at judgments based upon how many conservatives and Democrat judges they are. It's like is this a is this a political issue? Well, God help you. <laughs> yes, and this this is a political issue. Like, this is a political issue. Because, again, as they've said again and again, this isn't about, you know, re recompense for the victims. This is about taking Alex Jones' platform away. That's what this is about. Yep. Uh, uh... As to the, um, the Supreme Court, I think the Supreme Court right now is, is, is relatively conservative, isn't it? I think so. I, if I remember right, the Democrats are very upset about it. Because I know Clarence Thomas has been on quite the uh, the rip as of late, and good on him. Um, I, I, God, I hate the fact too, though, that you you've got to refer to the Supreme Court as conservative or Democrat. Like that is just such a fucking awful thing. I mean, the whole system's a little special. But again, hopefully the checks and balances will actually fucking catch this. Hopefully. But it's actually not... Because no, it's going to be pushed up to another court. So hopefully they they get it and they're like, oh, this is ridiculous. And they fix it. 5-4 conservative. Or some say 6-3-2. Yeah. Because um, there's the thing. There is no way the appeal court accepts this. I, it's, it's, it is a joke. A billion dollars. Like, just it can't possibly. So it's going to go to the Supreme Court, where it's going to become a political issue, straight up. And what will happen then is anybody's biggest. Because the thing is, again, like they've launched this on a very rocky basis to begin with. Like it's a defamation lawsuit. Like mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Okay, if if it's defamation then you need to prove what Alex Jones did to defame these people. You know, that's, that's how defamation works. And I don't see how he's defamed them. But maybe, like, you could argue that he's claimed that they weren't actually victims of a crime? I... I, I guess. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure. Like the whole thing's gonna be a fucking disaster field. It's gonna. We're gonna have to wait to see what happens when the dust settles because apparently it's ongoing still. Yes, because it's gonna go to appeals now, and then it'll probably be sent up to Supreme Court. But again, there's no way the billion dollar stands. Like it's ridiculous. And again, um, I wanna, I wanna just uh, give a little bit of a, a shill out here too to all the. Let me see if I can find the video he did on it. Old, uh, old and wrinkly somebody's. Old oh, wrinkly somebody. Uh, <laughs> here, I'll just give you his picture. Right, you should definitely check oh, out wow. the little video that uh, the leather the leather fetishist did on this. Old and wrinkly because, um, is what you call. <laughs> yes. Now, personally, I can see the leather, leather fetishists to basically be adjacent to furries and uh, you know salmon fuckers. But wow. even so, <laughs> he, he, even so, uh, he does a good job, and he calls it exactly as it is that this is a railroad job. Ah, it's Alex Jones rides the rails. His latest vi yes. uh, video. Gotcha. Yes, and he's, he's he's dead on. He is absolutely dead on. Like the first judge is a Democrat activist who who literally ran on a platform of always believing the victim. Like, that's a great fucking position in a judge there. 
And the next judge literally convicted him before the trial started. Right, yeah, no, he's, uh, he's getting taken down, and that is really the only way to put it. <laughs> All the judges are very conveniently, like, really bad. <laughs> like, this is a hack job on the level of, uh, of uh, I was about to say, Cossie. Oh, God, what was his name? Like, the black person who was accused of raping people. Bill uh, Cosby. Bill no, Cosby, no. yep. I Bill mean, Cosby. I, I could see Cosby Bill doing Cosby, it. Bill Cosby, the man whose judge literally ran on a platform of convicting Bill Cosby. <laughs> oh, heavens. Christ, old criminy cricket. But oh. yeah, this will go to the Supreme Court, and uh, we'll, we'll see. Like, I... Like, the thing is, I, I do believe that Alex Jones has probably done something at least morally wrong here. Like, I, I will give him the my moral judgment. Wow. Because I do think he went one step too far. And basically, oh, this didn't happen. Like, okay. And to be, he also basically said, yeah, no, I was wrong on that. Which, honestly, at that point, that should be the end of it. Like, pr persecute, or persecute, prosecute the people who actually did the harassment rather than Alex Jones at that point. And if you actually absolutely have to convince, convict him of something, you know, <laughs> at least make it reasonable. And I also do like the fact too, Alex Jones says sorry, and the, the amount he needs to pay goes from 46 million to 965. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit, uh, there's, that's, not, uh, that's not how that should work with, uh, you know, details. <laughs> one one might all, almost think that there'd be some kind of lesson to be learned in there. You yeah, but I mean, I don't uh, know what else to say other than the fucking like the ridiculousness of this whole thing. Like it's it's just absolutely a farce. Oh uh, yeah, the chat actually brings up a good point as well. Uh, didn't other media get away with this? The no reasonable person would believe this defense when they accused Rittenhouse way before the trial. Yes, so fuzzy was he, but uh, you know. Um, it, it's good that the progressives have a double standard because otherwise they would have no standard at all. All right, let's uh, move on from Alex Jones' uh, trials and tribulations, uh, literally, to uh, to Twitch and Amazon, uh. who has decided to uh, insert their PP into the anal openings of many, many people stupid enough to uh, make their platform a job. Oh, it's a little sand face now. Like, oh. <laughs> Why Amazon won't foot the bill to pay Twitch streamers better? Fuck them. So, first and <laughs> foremost, uh, Twitchers are <laughs> fairly like, like I, I believe there is enough evidence to say that they're at the very least unclean. Okay? That's I, I think false. there's enough evidence for that. They're not unclean. They're just stuck on a shitty platform that uh, is filled with hor horrific moderation and a very corrupt staff. Unclean, that no, no, unclean, I believe, is the correct term. That's why they had to make uh, the uh, bath uh, bathtub streams an exemption to the TOS, because even Twitch was like, please, clean yourself. Please clean yourself. I don't think that. I think it was more so they wanted to, the fucking modders wanted to look at, like, half-naked girls. Well, yes, that is that is also the uh, <laughs> the other reason but hey details now as somebody who actually multi-streams and is actually on twitch what twitch gives you is actually not a whole lot like no they, they don't give you a lot guys they give you like potatoes some little things like the most of most of the meat always comes from youtube youtube is the real money maker but uh now it's even more than it was before because they take 50 percent now instead of uh whatever the hell ridiculous percentage it was before i can't even remember well, the thing is, previously, um, if you were a big boy, like if you were really contributing to Twitch, uh, you were given a 70-30 revenue split, which is the basic on YouTube, I'd like to remind you. Yeah, basic. <laughs> and 70-30, in my opinion, is... It, it, it's, it's, it's close to reasonable. Like, I think 30% is, is too much, like 20, 10 it would probably be fairer in relations to the amount of effort actually put in, you know? Yeah, you provide a platform. The, the, the content creator does 99.9% .9 of the work. All you do yeah. is simply relay that work forward. Like, you are literally yeah. a pass-through. 
<laughs> Absolutely. That is all you do. Like, and you know, they need to be paid a little, like they got to take a cut to earn money and they got to pay, be paid a little bit to get the advertisement deals. Okay. 20%, 20%. I'd say it was fair, more than fair in fact, but all right. But now uh, Twitch has gone down to a 50, 50 split. 50, 50. I mean, if they want to push like, people off the platform and onto YouTube, I guess it's, this is good news for YouTube as a whole. Yeah, no, Twitch does not do uh, 50% of the job. Bullshit. Definitely <laughs> Absolute not. Absolute bullshit. Like, they, okay, they have chat. They, I see some people like, well, they have nice chat features. Yes, they have uh, some chat features. Cute. But that doesn't mean jack shit. Because all the content has to be made by the content creator themselves. Having little, yes. oh, look, this little fucking animated emoji comes up. Nobody cares. Nobody fucking cares about stupid animated emoji. Emojis are nice, but they're not what make content good or worth watching. <laughs> oh, and hey, look, a little snack in chat too. Hello, Rosa. You have been acknowledged. It's the spicy noodle. But again, like 50-50 is bullshit. Like, again, and I want to point out too, on, on YouTube, right, you get a lot of money from backlog because people like re-watching old stuff. Like this, my, my lore channel has done very well because of this, because I create content that can often be rewatched. Like people tell me that they've rewatched Vrax like seven fucking times. And that's fantastic because the backlog gives so much content, so much views, so much passive income. So that when you build up a good backlog, that's actually where a lot of your money comes from. And this is the beauty of the backlog. Like, I'm, I've, I'm recently on another binge. Like, every couple of years, I start re-watching old Total Biscuit videos because he's the only content creator I've ever liked. I swear to Jesus. Like, the people I watch today... I watch because I actually, I'm literally friends with those people. Like, I watch Maka, I watch Razor Fist, I occasionally pop into Kyle's chat to call him a queer homosexual, you wow. know, stuff like that. Other content creators, like, I I don't watch any. Like, if anything, it's like ASMR, because I find it chill in the background when I do gaming. You would do that. I knew it. <laughs> I would do that, because it's adorbs. And that's about it. Like gaming content creators, like fuck. Since since TB, I've I don't think I've watched a single one. Like, and the reviews, God help me. No. Yeah, Where reviews reviews are dead to me. I watch sometimes. I watch those historical channels like Ticks, like or any of those guys, but uh, or some of those uh, like armchair See, stuff or whatever the fuck. My problem with that is I look at it and then go and I think to myself, I can do a better job than you. Yeah, that's another get problem. Annoyed. Because you you have your own interpretation. That is something that uh, Arch actually mentioned that a lot of content creators I know, like, unless you're friends or you know them, like, I don't... It's difficult to watch other people because then you you look at their content in a very different way because you're in that field. You're like, you are you're you watch another person do a Let's Play or a stream thing and you're like, you don't really like how they interact with their audience like that. Or I wish they wouldn't do that. Or that's kind of annoying. I don't like that. <laughs> it's kind of, you get picky and finicky. You're like, eh, eh. <clears throat> you get many, biased. The many little things, yes. You get biased real fast. You do. You absolutely do. Like, uh, if you want to continue enjoying YouTube, um, don't start making YouTube content. You're gonna have a very different perspective. It's it's like when you know you get into game making or anything like that. Like, video games aren't the same once you start making them. You still love them, but your perspective changes. Oh, but on that topic too. Huh? Uh, so, Carl, I'm going to send you a secret link, say which you shouldn't <gasps> show, right? Okay, well, I'm not going to open that then, just to be safe. Yes. Uh, put that <laughs> somewhere else and download the flag final master comp there. Pinning it. I'm going to open that later just so I don't accidentally open it on stream. Because I assume you don't want me to do it now. Well, I want you to show the movie that is in there. Oh, show them the whole drive and just give them the drive access. Like, no, Kib, asshole, Kib. <laughs> Indeed, asshole. <laughs> okay, so download the master comp, gotcha. <clears throat> yes, the flying final master comp. Okay, downloading. You want me to open it? Yes, but show that to, to stream. All right, chap. It's not gay porn. God, we've... I hope we've kind of wandered off the topic here, but we will get back onto it. It's a fucking <laughs> podcast. See, wandering off topic is fine. People who complain about it can shut the hell up and get stuffed. True. 
<clears throat> but yeah, so um, I've I've been working on a World War II uh, project as well in the background, and it just kind of keeps getting larger. And yep, larger hello. and larger <laughs> and um this is the one of the animations i've got made now so because i wanted to have an animated back because i want something in the background something stuffy so something to be there to watch whilst i'm talking about stuff you know and so i've got a nice little flag uh, flag comp there it's got a little boat driving around and flag or wavy shit you got people walking around on deck etc um, this was made by, uh, Vukasin, one of the artists we've got, uh, enslaved. Very, very talented boy. Very talented mm -hmm. boy. Also, very Eastern well European, which is good. Because it means that if he doesn't do what I tell him to, he starves to death. Or That's only why we moment. hire from the third world. They become dependent on us, so they try to escape. They can't get very far. They're hungry. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Precisely. <laughs> You've even got little, uh, little guns in the background there that's going to turn fire and shit. And I'm going to have a Japanese one made as well. And I'm going to have like a desk one. And I'm setting up a recording studio in um, the adjacent house, quote unquote. I mean, we have like an adjacent house thing uh, where I can do stuff there. Like, I'm, this is going to be some quality, I'm hoping. And it'll be good and fun looking. If I ever, you know, actually start making it instead of just preparing to make it. Honestly, it'll be worth it in the long run. Think of it as an investment like any project, because that's... That's what this is. This is going to make Vrax a little tiny thing compared to this, because this is going to be bigger. This is, this is one of the biggest be, projects you made. It's going to be a lot prettier. Like, it's to the point where, like, if it weren't for GW being such enormous cuckolds, I would think about remaking Vrax in this style. But honestly, um, Janovich is already doing that. And, well, we do have another secret project going on, which might benefit more from this in the future. What could that be, chat? Big thinkies. What could that be? <laughs> what could that be? They'll have but to guess. Yeah. To return to the Twitch topic. Uh, so yeah, 50% is obviously insanity. And Twitch doesn't have that kind of backloggy culture, you know? They they do have a, a sort of, kind of, pseudo backloggy thing. But that's not really how Twitch monetizes stuff. So the thing is, if you're going to do Twitch as a living, you got to stream and stream mm -hmm. and stream regularly and stream and stream. Even as a YouTube streamer myself, like if I don't stream every day, I miss a day. I got to make up for that. Otherwise, you're going to starve. You got to keep going. You can't stop. Yeah. Like the uh, the the treadmill of Twitch is ridiculous. Ridiculous. I, I think theirs is worse, if I remember right, though. <laughs> yes, theirs is even worse. Like I have heard so many horror stories of Twitch streamers who never make it. They don't even get close to making it, and they stream like six, seven, eight, nine hours a day. And why don't they make it? Because a pretty little blonde chick is sitting in a bathtub somewhere. <laughs> Yep, because the the, rea the reality is, the reason why we chose female mascots is, you know, tits literally get clicks. Like, th there is a gender difference in the content creation sphere. Women have an easier time, and always will. Well, attractive women. There's, yes, the, uh, there's the there's caveat. the caveat. There's the big old caveat. <laughs> Let me correct myself there. The attractive women, they 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 have they don't need a personality. They just need big tits. And to be fair, you know, they're blessed with them, so lucky them. If we get big tits, uh, that doesn't really do much good for us, I don't think. <laughs> well, <laughs> there, there's a reason for the meme, the Twitch female streamer, where there's like, there's gameplay in a tiny window off somewhere. <laughs> and in the middle of the screen, there's an enormous pair of jugs. Just, uh -huh. Like, honestly, at that point, I don't get why people just don't like Google big titties. Like... Oh, maybe it's the, the, well, it's, it's the, the parasocial, parasocial relationship yep, yep. aspect of it's it. It's the parasocial. That's, that's, what, that's what it is. Because everybody, the, the, the parasocial aspect, we should really do like a, a discussion on that. Because it's rather interesting how it's manifested in the content creation sphere. And how people have these illusions or delusions of attachment to people they've never met nor spoken to in their entire life. It's crazy. It is actually rather genuinely disturbing. 
there's some there's been some really weird things that have happened to both arch and i throughout uh, our time on the content creation sphere some really fucking weird shit <laughs> uh but, but yeah, yeah like, big titties twitch twitch is a twitch is a garbage platform this straight up straight up and the thing is back in the day twitch had very strict content moderation um policies oh yeah there you go. i finally found the mina meme i was looking for there you go now it works ah where did uh, go? but yes Twitch used to have very strict content moderation policies, and this was back in 2060, like it's fucking years ago now, right? Where it was a gaming platform only. Gaming platform only. That was it. You you couldn't do anything else. And so even there were even back then female streamers who did the whole big booby thing, which weren't even playing the game. They had recordings of the game playing in the background oh, as they God. pretended to play. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember seeing a clip of this not too long ago, maybe a month or so, of some guy playing Halo or whatever, and it's clearly a professional, like, clip of somebody playing extremely well. It's like, this is a professional player here. And the guy on screen is sort of, like, pretending, like, oh, yeah, I got that. And he's, like, more interactive chat. It's so fake. Because you, when you know when you're in, you're like in the zone, you're actually playing the game proper, and you're in a, on a roll like that, you're not like casual about it. You're you're in it. Like that was so silly. And then he's like, "All right, guys, I'm gonna turn it off." Or the like, the YouTube video starts playing, and the recommends come up. Like, That's enough game, guys. I'm going now. It's like, uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't do that. <laughs> But over the years, people started to realize that the best way to gain attention on Twitch was, uh, well, tits. And it worked out very well for a handful of people, uh, at least. Because the, the, the more content moderation strategy and policy slowly but surely started to change. Slowly but surely started to change. Well, that's strange. They, they had this... Do that? Um, <laughs> They were they were banning people for the hall for the for being you know naked in front of the camera for a while, but they only banned certain people. Where's where the whole reputation arrived over the uh, the Twitch mod's favorite ethot, basically. Yep. And eventually we arrived at uh, well this uh, <laughs> a nice demonstrative picture there, where they came up with the idea that it was okay to be in a bikini. If you were in a tub or something. Yeah, what a <laughs> contrived thing. It's like, okay, it's like a it's a tub stream, a hot tub stream, you know? Yeah. Like so it was the most these... contrived thing in the history of contrived things, right? Yeah, they just like people blow up pools and then stream themselves in the pool. Like <laughs> yes. that's such a weird fucking thing. I can't get over it. Isn't it just, but again, it's like, it's not, it's not weird either. Like you, un, you know why, you know it's why, because, but it's still weird. They're yeah. doing it. It's, it's, it's the blatant nature of it all. <laughs> all right. Oh, oh, this one's, this one's pretty good. Oh, I like this one. Jesus Christ. So, maybe. uh, here we have a uh, woman <laughs> riding an enormous inflatable hot dog. Uh, I'm real glad our fellow content creators are really bringing new ideas to the sphere, you know? <laughs> Things are really growing among us. We're advancing as a... No, we're not. <laughs> right, okay. You know what? Maybe the 50-50 split is actually quite reasonable. You know, maybe, it's, maybe it makes sense. Maybe right? for some content creators that don't actually make content and make basically <laughs> porn. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, it's 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 funny. I quite enjoy it. But yeah, like th But this is what Twitch is today. Like th this is what Twitch is today, because most of the big name Twitch streamers have either been sued by Twitch, let go, gone kicked off the platform, or trying to start their own stuff. To the point where this is now the bread and butter, and you have Twitch, which is a platform, and there's also been a lot of um. 
well, political stuff on Twitch because it's grown into a very progressive platform. And so, of course, you have uh, people like Hassan Pika, who literally just leaves the camera rolling whilst he waffles away to have dinner half the time, which is just, oh, brilliant. <clears throat> Who are you talking about? <laughs> Nobody does that. And... Yeah, it's a progressive platform that now doesn't want to pay people. And what is also interesting is, what what else what else has happened recently, Kyle? What what else does Amazon own that has turned into enormous economic flops recently, Kyle? I, I couldn't tell you. Couldn't be any sort of like film or anything. Couldn't be some kind of TV show that. No. Uh, here, but, oh, okay. Chad is too happy not. with the women in bikini, so let's give her give them some beer, girl. And that should shut him up. God, I feel like I'm genuinely going to throw up when you send this shit to me. I'm going (laughs) to grab a drink out of the fridge, Christ's sake. (laughs) I I quite liked the Dear Girl saga. Like, I was watching the Dear Girl saga as it unfolded, and I was thinking to myself, I mean, on the one hand, I probably should cover this because it's clickbaity as fuck, but on the other hand, I literally could not bring myself to cover Dear Girl Saga. Yes, I remember we had a conversation because I'm like, oh, just do it, you big baby. And he's like, I should, but it's kind of gross. And it's like, yes, yes it is kind of gross, Arch. <laughs> I, 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 have, I have certain limits, okay? Listen. I, I, some, some. The thing is, this wouldn't bother me at all. Like, people can do whatever they want in their spheres, and that's their own business. Like, whatever. But the only problem I have is when they get hypocritical. You know? Well, that was also the part of the Dear Girl yeah. saga, because uh, obviously Dear Girl saga is a saga because she was also a Twitch moderator who went out of her way to crush anyone in ideological opposition. Yep. See, that's the thing. I think everybody has a right to their own sphere of influence, so to speak. But the minute they start attacking somebody else, that's when you break the NA- the NAP. That's when he- that's when your number comes up. That's when you break the Nambla. God damn it, Kyle. Stop doing that. No. <laughs> no more naps. But, yeah, my dear girl saga was, uh, was this thing. It, it, it was it was quite the thing. It was quite the thing. And obviously, all of the... <clears throat> it, <clears throat> God, I mean. And obviously, I am 98% sure that this has to do with the rings of power. 98% sure. Like, Amazon has been overseeing some catastrophic flops as of late. Some, some very, 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 very nasty ones. And the Rings of Power cost them a lot of money. And Twitch probably hasn't been profitable for a very long time. And unlike YouTube, Twitch doesn't have that, that, social, um, that social power. Like, Twitch can run out of, um, uh, you know, YouTube. YouTube doesn't need to earn money because it has social power. Like, it, it's allowed to tell you what you can and can't believe. Like, it can dictate the news cycle straight up. Twitch can't do that. And so Twitch is now moving towards becoming a profitable platform, which means giving the people who do all the work less money, whilst reserving more for themselves. Mm. The amount of work that a Twitch streamer needs to do will not decrease. In fact, it'll probably drastically increase. I mean... But, um... On the right side, there might be less competition. Are Are you surprised? Remember, uh, we have a we have a good old Trader Doge friend named All Dog, and All Dog, we used to work for Amazon, and I remember hearing horrific, horrific stories about what they did, like to their workers at places like that. How it's basically just like a, it's just a hellhole. They treat their employees like absolute dog shit, and they give them nothing. <laughs> I believe it was uh, was uh, was Fag Dog who told us the tale of the crying room. The cry room. Yeah, I do remember him <laughs> talking about that. <laughs> there was a little dedicated, like, um, completely dark room in the Amazon building, which where you could go to cry <laughs> from all the overstress. That's oh my that, god. That that's is sad. <laughs> you have to have oh, a dedicated room so people can vent. Their yes. their frustrations because your workplace is that bad. 
Like, your work environment requires a crying room. Hmm, problems. We need you to go invent your stress so you don't come and shoot up the place. Please do it over there. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> just, uh, just a little bit of insane there. Yeah, no, don't work for Amazon if you can, if you can do it. If you can help yourself. I, the thing I fear, though, is that this will now expand. And the YouTube as well will look at this and go, yeah. I hope not. Yeah. I hope YouTube does more, more or less just stays uh, the status quo. Because YouTube should, YouTube should view it this way. They're self-destructing. Now is a perfect opportunity to extend a hand and steal their popular streamers. Now's well, the opportunity. Yeah, that, that is what they should do. Like, they should actually make this a marketing campaign and go, on YouTube, we won't treat you like expendable cum rags. Yeah, on YouTube, we'll just treat you like expendable, you know, phoenixes, which aren't cum yeah. rigs. But they could be. <laughs> and they don't treat us very well. Of course, um, <laughs> to, to give chat a reprieve from, from dear girl, poor, poor chat. You may escape it for now, Chant, but she'll be back. We've also got to mention that based all Elon is uh, is sitting nearby. Yeah. And he talked in private and a little bit in public about X, which is a great name for a secretive mystery thing. I will grant him that. Which he's planning to be the everything app. That's what he's talked about. He wants this to be social media he wants it to be twitter he wants it to be youtube he wants it to be a payment processor like everything you do on the internet should be run through x in some way see this sounds now, nice but that sounds as soon as the thing gets corrupt already because everything will corrupt with time if it's successful because power corrupts you'll have well, this that's, one uh, monolith corrupt thing <laughs> that's the flip side like if if Elon decides to, then well, he will also have all of your collective balls. Yes, because but, at some point Elon will pass away. It's sad, and we all die. But the people who inherit these things will become corrupt. Look at the Tolkien estate. Yes. <laughs> Somebody. But luckily, I'll up. be dead by then. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> you little shit. Try to think for the generations that are coming behind you. Uh, fuck them. The problem like they can is learn our lessons again. The problem is that's what the previous generations did, and that's why we're stuck in this cyclical loop. But I I have far more faith in Elon than I do in in Google. Oh god. That's <laughs> or true. Twitter or Facebook, etc. So and here's the thing. He is in a perfect position to just take the piss out of all of the competition. If Elon swoops into the market and says, like, I give a shit about you, the creator, I'll take a 10% cut, he, and with all of his money, all of the PR, all of the buzz he will be able to create, like, Elon Musk, if he says, like, hey, YouTubers, like, contact me and puts out an email, uh, PewDiePie, Markiplier, like, every, every big name YouTuber will be emailing his ass in the next five fucking minutes. Yeah. And with that, he can set up a platform that has all of the big names. And with his his meme magic, he will attract the people. And with his incredible... Like, the amount of... The amount of backing from the moneyed elite he has too, he's going to have all of the advertisers as well. Meaning that Elon is not just going to break the vicious circle, he is going to... Imp He's going to take all of the points at one, because if you don't have the creators, you don't have the audience. If you don't have the audience, you don't have the, have the advertisers and so on. This is why BitChute and Rumble will never become genuine competitors. Mm -hmm. These alternatives Elon has suck. all three of those things. Yes. See, that's, that's another thing. Oh, we really should have a dedicated fucking Bargecast just talking about the alternatives to YouTube, because it needs to be stated again and again. The fact that they are not alternatives, they do not come near. Like, we've tried them. We've tried the Rumble. People have tried the bit shoot shit. And it works for established content creators, but good lord, if you're a new content creator, don't be an idiot. Just make a YouTube thingy. You can switch when you have an audience. Like, if, if that helps you guys. But please. I've seen too many little fucking Muppets be like, I'm going to make a bit. It's like, oh, you're just going to sit there and make content for no reason for a good while. Enjoy your waste of time. <laughs> no, it's not. And also, you're completely wrong, Boog. 
Rumble isn't growing stronger. Bart, you want to recount, retell, regale us about your Rumble adventures? Back when you were but uh, Rumble a Rumble is not, uh, not doing <laughs> particularly amazingly. Uh, for context, chat, a long time ago, or but not that long ago, Barch got uh, deplatformed a little bit off his main channel, and he was stuck on Rumble for a bit. He was a little rumbler, and I got to tease him. I was like, hey, you're smaller than me now. <laughs> and it was not very good. Like, the interface, the tools, the everything, just not worth it. It has an unbelievably bad backend. It's horrific. I looked at it like briefly. No, I don't want to do it. I don't want to use it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it is it is unbelievably poor. And all of their automation features are also absolutely awful. Like just just terrible. Like it's it's not a good platform. It is not a good platform. It's just none of them are. Like I tried Odyssey. Odyssey's neat. There I have a, like I've got an audience over there. I forget they exist and occasionally I remember to check it and I see them commenting like Kibbs will one notice us one day. I'm like, whoops, I feel a little bad about that. <laughs> but it's hard to it's also hard to keep tabs on all these things. Imagine if there was some sort of system where you could actually keep tabs on being on multiple platforms. It's difficult to multi stream. Even with like things like restream, because you have to monitor content on multiple platforms. And it gets out yes. of hand the further you go. Yes. Which is exactly also why an everything platform has such potential. Because if instead of having PayPal links and Streamlab links and, and Super Chats, etc., if everything could just be one integrated solution, that would be incredible. Like, imagine if he puts out a streaming software to accommodate this with restream capabilities, etc., like basically, you just log into your X platform, and then there's a drop-down tool there. Like, this is your streaming system. Uh, do you want to stream here, 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 and here? And you just do it. Nobody would ever use YouTube or anything else again because you can literally use YouTube from X. Yeah, that would not be a terrible idea. In fact, that would actually be a really good idea. The idea of a it would be. As a content creator and having a centralized like tool to create actually be a great use on that side. Like there are, there's pros and negatives to this. The negatives being that it's all centralized, but the pro being that it's this massive tool that we could actually access and manage multiple platforms with would be nice. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now. Before we move on to the last topic, which is Kevin Smith finally opening his eyes, Kibbs too has been begging to have topics. So, Kibbs. I know. They're, it's strange. Now, you guys might have forgot what the focus of this channel is, but Kibbs remembers. <laughs> the focus of this channel is me and whatever I want. So, I have two topics, because we're going to do two, because you've done so many, and it's only fair I get two. You got, like, five. No. Yes. No, so long as none of them exceed five minutes. Oh, my God. <laughs> So the first one I want to talk about is the resurgence and remakes from the era that came before the one we're in. So the decade before, because we have like we got the Resident Evil remake, we got we got the Dead Space remake coming along, and so far these franchise reboots have been actually doing pretty good, all things considered, which is actually quite surprising because I was originally quite negative towards the idea of them. But one thing I want to point out here is these remakes are coming about because we. I think developers and everyone sort of lost track of where they were going and got disillusioned. Like, a lot of these franchises imploded on themselves. Resident Evil became a uh, an action shooter because the marketing team didn't really know what to sell the game with. Dead Space 3, same thing. Like, they, they started to shift away from the original genre focuses. And this is not isolated to just one genre or one game. We see this also with resurgences from the uh, very successful World of Warcraft classic stuff, where they've been re-releasing old stuff and it's actually received much better than the the uh, the new current stuff. And what I thought was interesting about this is, do you think, and does anyone else think, that maybe maybe by just redoing or re retreading the old ground where we lost our way, we can once again be on the right track again? No, because this is nothing more than a cold-hearted, cynical cash grab to re-release a thing they knew did well and to prey upon your nostalgia. It's true. It does actually prey upon your nostalgia in that in that regard. But like yeah, things no. like the Resident Evil remake, or like in that case, they did do some unique things with that, where they actually made a new game. 
with new mechanics. Like the Dead Space remake is a new game. It's not a remake. It's not a remaster. It's got more stuff in it that the other ones didn't or the old one doesn't. But it also has like modernity of like modern control schematics. Oh, oh, you have no idea. Some of those old games really do not age well. And the, some of those ports are horrific, not to mention Dead Space ones included. That's actually the thing is, I I have no hope whatsoever that this will remind anyone of why they were doing this shit in the first place. Because the the entire gaming industry has become just that an an industry. Now, what could happen? The most optimistic interpretation is that the companies who own these other companies will look at the success of say you know a, a red, the red alert remake and go hold well on why did they do well? want strategy games with stories in them that's it, weird it's a bit homosexual <laughs> i try that again like literally they'll they'll be like They'll be like fucking aliens finding a cow and they'll poke it and it'll moo and they'll just stand back in confusion like, whoa, do it again. And then they'll be rewarded with money and they'll be really confused about it. But no, well, it's, it's the same with the entertainment <laughs> industry as well. So uh, what I find rather interesting is you've been you've been seeing a you've been seeing a um shift a very slow shift a very slow and general shift back towards more of the the old standard kind of like how they used to do things um star trek strange new worlds is the best example of this star trek strange new worlds is a it, it is it is um a peace offering and and it is also a probe Basically, it goes out and it goes like, okay, so sexually transferable disease did fairly poorly and none of you liked the black chick. Now, we were told you would like the black chick and you didn't like the black chick, so we're confused. How, how about this? And they very carefully reach out their hand and in it is just every Star Trek episode be made before, but the plot is rehashed. Yeah. <laughs> that is what Strange New Worlds is. It's the problem with Strange New Worlds is, is it it's a prequel to like the original series. And because it's a prequel to the original series, they think that's okay. That means that they well if we do it again here, technically in lore it happened before it happened over there, so you know what? We did it first. It's like, no, that's not quite how that works, buddy. That is a it's a good try. <laughs> it's a good try. <laughs> but but what what they're doing is they're basically checking to see if you want just Star Wars, because that's what Strange New Worlds is. It's just Star Wars, literally. It, it even literally retreads many of the same plot points. And another interesting thing as well that it does is the mix of the female characters. So all of the male characters in Strange New Worlds are handsome, athletic, and cool looking, right? All of them. Like for the fucking captain is the most dapper gentleman you will ever see, right? There's not an, not not an ugly man in the entire cast because Hollywood understands that sex still sells. It's just that they've been convinced that women that we don't want hot women on screen for some fucking ridiculous reason. And yet in a strange new world, half of the crew is attractive and the other half isn't. Like Nurse Chapel, hot blonde chick, and then you've got Lesbo chick with the sides of her hair shaved. Ooh. Yeah, that's just, well, th I think that's more like a common, what do you call it? That's a style right now that a fad's in. The half-shaved hair on girls right now, it's an hey, atrocious but... fad. It's like the mullet she, come back. She's also not a particularly <laughs> conventionally, uh, she's not presented as a as a conventionally attractive woman. And she's not ridiculous ago. But the way she dresses, the way she's presented, her hairstyle, all of it makes her look at best androgynous. And then, and then you've also got like number two again, another fairly attractive female. And then you've got Uhura also, which is just like shaved hair, like short cup, Ugh. which is not even canon. Wait. Oh my god! It, it, at least give her the same haircut. For the love of God, you know what? 
you're making me mad. So the fucking hairstyles in that show, I really wish they would actually all emulate the fucking like 60s hairstyles of the period. Yes. Because at least make yes. it look like it's made in the same era. Because that was the Original era. Uhura, Uhura was, was quite hot, actually. Yeah, she had those swirly hair that, that was popular in the 60s. Yes, exactly. And the, the interesting thing is, again, I, I am 98% sure that what Strange New World is trying to do, it, it's trying to, like, check if, if you want it. And it's like, right, which, one, which one of these characters will be the most popular here? Hmm, you could, we could have found out if Hammer was one of our favorite characters, but you killed him. Well, Actually, that's because Hammer literally only existed to fucking die. He questioned Uhura's greatness, and therefore he, he paid the ultimate price. He did. I actually kind of liked Hammer's character, because he was kind of just a bit of a cynic. Well, he was a bit of a cynic when he was impregnated, too. <laughs> he was very cynical, and so he killed himself. They should, they should oh, God. bullshit and bring him back. That annoys me. See, I'm trying to de googleify myself as much as possible by using like DuckDuckGo and shit, but DuckDuckGo search engine is really. Also, DuckDuckGo is corrupt as well. I, I, after they. Aren't they corrupt? Didn't they do something bad recently? Yeah, they did. But, so fuck them. Okay. Do, do, do not wander Google. too far off the goddamn topic, you little scumbug. <laughs> and then contrast this, because I was moving on to the point. Contrast this with the Orville. The Orville has Ensign Charlie Burke. Ooh. Hot. hot She's woman. pretty. Yeah, look yeah, at that. No question about it. Hot woman. They have um uh, God, I, I I need I need to use Google because it's the only one that fucking functions. <laughs> okay, and they've got secu security officer. Again, another attractive female. Like every female in the Orville is attractive. Like hell, even the like 50-year-old doctor isn't bad looking. And Give it does way, way, Let's way prove better. It. <laughs> and this, uh, this is what, if anything, that the gaming companies could maybe, possibly, learn Hopefully. from the remasters. I'm it could be the same thing, where they're reaching out their hands and going, do, do, do you like, like this? I'm kind of somewhat hopeful for things like the Dead Space remake and other of these remakes, and maybe if we get another Command and Conquer remaster, because a lot of the people that are being put in charge of these projects are actually, well, at least from the, the cursory lookups I did on the directors behind them, have a good understanding of what they're doing, and also in their interviews talk about how they did a lot of studying on the older games to try to understand them and how what made them great. This is something that we saw people lose alignment to as these franchises went on, where they forgot what made them good. And so the fact that they're reaching back and touching that again and actually looking at that and be like, okay, well, what where did we go wrong? Like what was this what was this franchise about? Where did we lose our way? And then they these new guys that come in are actually taking that time to look and see where these franchises came from. And respecting that is the most important part. Respecting what came before and actually trying to emulate the past, but also try to revamp it for the modern world. Yes, and this could also be how the companies begin to learn. Right? Then, then start, start realizing that, okay, this actually does do better. And if, if that happens, then thank God. But, like, I, I think this is, this is, if anything, in my opinion, a symptom of a wider shift rather than, like, a, a creation in and of itself. Like, I, I think this is a lot of companies looking back and trying to figure out what people want. Because they were told that people wanted a certain thing, and then they did that certain thing. And then it turned out that people didn't want that thing because they were told they wanted that thing by raging fucking idiotic ideologues. Yep, who infiltrated their way into these companies. Because if I did some looking at some of these people that actually weasel their way into these companies way back when with HBS and a few other in, uh, smaller game developer studios, because I was curious. And the people, these people that if you actually look into them and who they are, they actually did care about the franchise at one point because they, they talk about it in, in a way that only somebody who actually truly cared would. But some point down the line in their life, tragically, they were radicalized. 
And now that they've been infused with this radical ideology, this political ideology that they must insert it everywhere, they feel like it's a need that they must insert it into the thing that they also grew up on and cared about. That's why they're doing it, too. These people have been corrupted. Man can only be cleansed by fire. Oh, my God. It is tragic. <laughs> Arch man, murder man. But... Yeah, and besides that, uh, that kind of wraps up my thought on the whole remake thingies. But I do have one other topic that's actually really, really, really important. I want to save that one for now, which we're doing next, which is the Stable Diffusion AI. And not just the Stable Diffusion AI, but these AI art programs in general. Because what they there's a lot of people that are freaking out in the art community about them. There's also a lot of people that like don't oh, really Kyle. understand. What? 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 Be silent. Be silent, Kyle. Fine. What do you want? I need to. Well, that'll do for now. Huh? There you are. Oh, you want Put me to... Put that up, and then you can continue speaking. Oh, fucking God. Bart, you little horn dog. Okay, well, you get what I... I have the article there. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. The article is just to stoke the fires of your idea, not really read it. Who really cares what it says? Now, more important... She's like, what the fuck? Uh, more importantly, like... As a, as creators, because you have projects and uh, I have before, projects. Okay, I'm going to interrupt you ah, again here. Ah, before you keep interrupting you roll me. This, <laughs> explain what the stable infusion uh, diffusion AI is and why there's a pair of. If you didn't interrupt me every five minutes, maybe I'd remember what I'm talking explain. about. It's kind of hard to explain. With the explanation. It's kind of. Because you jumped into why a why artists care about. No. It's, yeah, it's because you keep interrupting. Cube. Now sit down, okay. duct tape over mouth. So, god damn it. So the, the reason why this AI thing matters so much, and what is this AI stuff? There's a program yes. uh, that exists where you can type in like things like big breasted uh, mommy milker girl uh, Victorian era clothing, and the AI will like generate that image that you type in. Now, the reason why this is such a big deal is because that AI is actually very decent. Now, it, it takes a lot of art and pre-existing art and then basically fuses it together. But one of those things that's interesting is a lot of artists are actually somewhat nervous about it because it actually, you know, it's fairly simple to do. And this is just an algorithm that makes these things. So you have somebody that has to study painting and lighting and shading and the art of all these things and like spend years on focusing and honing their skills to make fabric like that. Because making fabric with good folds and lighting and to show like the, you know, the softness of it isn't something that you can just do overnight. It's not something you can do over a month unless you're a savant. It's going to take you years of honing your skills and practicing as a craftsman. That's not something the AI has to deal with. <laughs> the AI can just sort no. of do it. The so, AI generates this shit in 30 seconds. It generates it in 30 seconds and gives you like seven variants to choose from. Now, yes. one thing I think... Uh, that a lot of the artists are worried about is that it's going to replace them completely. Automization uh, and removing of the human element in art. You, as Arch is continually spamming me with large-breasted women. Just, uh, just go through <laughs> them slowly. Nice. Okay, give people some variety to look at. Evil Kyle. Oh my fucking god, you little fucking horny piece of shit. Like, you're going to die alone, I swear to god. <laughs> Honestly, Poor like if not you giving you things to look at. If you look closely though, there are flaws though. Like let me let me examine the flaws real quickly, chat. And I'm not talking <laughs> yes, about the breasts. Let's zoom in and find the flaws in this picture. So, right there, hands. Hands, the AI is very much like humans. I think that the AI and humanity has a lot to in common. If anybody's ever drawn art or has been in art, you'll know that hands are a fucking pain in the ass. And so <laughs> The AI is also having the same problems, too. But I must say, though, you can definitely see, like, the algorithmic side of it. Especially when it's, like, the texturing, because it's clearly pulling it from some sort of texture reference. That sweater. Six-finger hands. Zoom. And heat. <laughs> see, <clears throat> to expand a little bit on Kyle's uh, retardation here. Because <clears throat> you interrupted me several times. I kind of forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> one one of the big issues with the uh, stable diffusion AI is that it's it's not as easy as you kind of kind of made it out to be because somebody posted like the description link they needed to produce like what you're seeing right now and it's a it's it's a it's a blurb and it took hours and hours of tweaking and keywords and references and stuff for the AI to start, you know, making this. 
you know? Mm-hmm. So it's not that easy. But even even then, even even if we go give it that, this is art quality that is five, six, seven years of regular, you know, art training in the making easily. Like that is why people freak out because this AI with a few hours of tweaking is producing art comparable and perhaps even superior to somebody who's been drawing for half a fucking decade. Yep. I'm going to pull up some more examples. Somebody in uh, my audience uh, made a bunch of little Aerith, which is our mascot, uh, with the, with these AI programs. And this shit, like they, they put these together pretty quickly. Like, it's, uh, it's kind of crazy how quickly and close they get in terms of design. It's, it's, it's interesting, but I definitely actually think a lot of people are overreacting in this regard because I think the AI is actually going to be useful as a tool for artists to create art that can be used to draw over because the AI is never going to make something truly genuinely unique. It just literally, it really can't because it's using pre-made stuff or stuff that has been made. In order to make something new and truly unique, it needs to pull from, you know, it needs to be able to imagine and create. It really can't do that. You have to instruct it. So I think a lot of artists, and especially a lot of amateur artists, are actually over overreacting in this regard. I think that the AI programs and these programs are actually going to be a huge benefit to them in the long run. And they shouldn't actually well, be afraid of them. There, there's a couple of things I'll, I'll say to that. Like one, I think no, I I think they should be afraid of this because if the AI is capable of this now, what will it be capable of in five years? Like if they keep drawing for five years to reach the AI's level, the fuck is the AI doing in five years? Like if this is what it can do now, you know, I I would be worried. Like I would not be going to art school right now if I were any of you guys. Uh, because right now, and there are there are issues and fuck ups. Like, let me uh, I'm gonna send you two pictures here, uh, where you see the first one. The woman has three arms. Hold on, hold on. Gotta open up thirty things because I have to scroll past all the other crap you've sent me. Oh God, their eyes are terrible though. Their eyes are what scares me because they look soulless. Uh, the eyes can look a bit weird. The proportions, too, are woomphy. But, like, that woman has three arms. This is a problem. Most women do not have three arms. Most. I'm sure some do. But uh, most most women do not have three arms. This is, uh, this is not a natural thing, right? The, the second one, you can see her arm is broken in several places. Also, one thing I do want to point out is if you want to make art, you don't really need to go to art school. You can just start drawing. The best way to learn is to teach yourself. And you'll suck at it, but, you know. Most of them... And you'll make lots of mistakes you didn't need to. The good animators I work with are better than the people that go to the fucking art schools. No, 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 no. I fully disagree. The art schools I'll, don't I'll teach you I'll give you art. something for the other half of our audience. Oh, no. Uh, hey, but baby. this one here, you can also see a fuck up, right? The, the bottom left uh, picture, that beer glass doesn't look quite right, does it? Listen, he's like, I want a tall glass. And the, the fucking bartender's like, okay. <laughs> Plus, okay. again, his arm is clearly quite wrong. So, yeah, like, the <laughs> AI silly. is far from perfect. But we are genuinely approaching a time. We are, we are heading towards a future where probably you will be able to download a software, like it'll be the, the for next version of Photoshop, but way better, where you can simply say, all right, um, draw me a fiery volcano, and there you'll have a fiery volcano. And then you'll add on details. And then you'll have to like pinch and prod a little bit, like draw me a big titted maid. And it gives you a maid with a broken arm. It's like, okay, now unbreak her arm, please. No, unbro- <laughs> unbroken arm this time again i do think that this is actually going to be a useful tool because a lot of the professionals i spoke to are actually looking forward to actually using this as a quick reference because they can get concept work done faster with these tools it's the amateurs that are the ones that are scared the pro- the pros aren't really too bothered by it because i think they see where the wind's really blowing. so um little uh, little danger noodle uh, sent us a thing too thank you rosa you could uh, look at that kyle you, you shouldn't ignore her kyle that's pretty fucking cool. 
You haven't sent me a... Uh, this was actually a good point as well. So what's happened here is apparently somebody uploaded a work in progress drawing. Somebody then took that work in progress drawing, yep. slammed it into an AI system, I know. and basically finished it. Yeah, we talked about this on the uh, the bickering bunch the other day with uh, Fairman. This is this is something somebody did, and th this is just assholes. These are trolls. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Um, basically, what happened is a troll basically more or less copied what the artist was doing, put it into an AI, then had the AI release it, then mocked the artist publicly, uh, which got him all sorts of flack, and then declared himself a self-proclaimed artist. He was like, I am much better than you. If you're in the, basically had the audacity to say, you you need to send me a better reference this time. It, it's a troll. It's a troll account. Like, it's clearly baiting. Because the thing is, one of the things obvious about the art community is artists are delicate creatures. They... They are easy to bait into things. And so the whole th point of this thing was clearly just to troll this one artist. But it also means that the, the, like, this is a genuine worry. Like, if, you, if you post anything online and people do this to you, okay, prove that he did it. Otherwise, it's his. Like, that's the thing. This is one of those things where the law is going to be needing to try and catch up to well, reality. This, this is already okay. a thing. So the AI, it doesn't really matter here because tracing is a thing that happens in real life. Like companies already do this. And the the reality is, is that uh, this is just going to happen. People copy yeah, designs all the th time. Game development studio. No, game development studios do this as well and have been caught and busted stealing character designs from other games or other people's work and then putting it in their games. Call of Duty got busted for doing this not that long ago. They basically took all those DLC skins. They were stolen from other artists because they uh, their teams just copied them and they sold I them. Know, I told you about this. It was the furry, you stealing little whore. I'm not stealing. I remember stealing. these things. Now sit down, Barge. Kibbs is educating you. <laughs> Like this, these things happen in the industry all the time already and have been happening for decades. Nothing's going to change here. <laughs> and it's also like this, this is going to kill artists. Now, it's not going to happen tomorrow. No. Might not happen in five years. Might not happen in time, 10 years. But the moment that people will be able to talk to their computer screen and have it generate art... That's probably the end of artists. Other, well, other than as like creative these programs, consultants. These programs are not going to be something you can purchase. These will be of service course features. They, no, of course they will be. Are you insane? Like the rated which technology I said they would advances? Be. No, they're going to be a service. Everything's a service. Everything's a subscription, especially in the industry. When it comes to Microsoft Office, when it comes to any of these tools or programs, even Clip Studios going down this route, everything in the industry has been switching into service mode. Well, meaning Tom, monthly subscriptions. I have, a, I have a solution to the service system. They have a solution too. It's called a crack. The best part is these services, That what they will do is you won't download a program. You'll have to go to their website to do it. That way they can keep it secure on their server. Oh, don't worry. It'll leak. It always does. Though I, I did find it very amusing recently where I think it was... um. I think I, I think it was Photoshop. So somebody was buying Photoshop. Right? They was paying for the service, which already makes him a subhuman retard, in my opinion. But details. And then when he was loading it up, Rings of Power advertisement appeared. Mm -hmm. I think you're talking about Carlos, aren't you? Uh, Carlos, no, Dev talked about this. Oh, Dev did. I think Carlos yeah. mentioned this the other day. Or, because it is beautiful. So you you are paying to be advertised at now like that is and not yep. to mention as well the the entire photoshop pay for photoshop thing is a joke and they're doing this because they can get away with it because right now they are the only name in the business that does all of this but this is another thing too as technology grows more and more like this people will be able to write programs more and more effectively as well until eventually like stuff like stable uh, diffusion AI is probably something that there's going to be a lot of variants of. There's going to be like 70 different variants of this auto-generating art program, all of them being competed uh, with one another because you can't really copyright this. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think this will ever replace artists, though, because there's always going to be demand for real, genuine art. There's something I authentic think, about it versus I soulless it garbage. I, I think that uh, the, the real, real artists, they, they'll still exist, but there'll be way fewer of them, and they'll essentially occupy the same area as, like, handmade craft goods do today. I don't you think know so. where um where people sell like um like like glassware that has been handmade by glass making professionals instead of just stumped out in a fucking factory and they command a much higher cost and they're much more exclusive and they still exist. I don't think so. I don't think that's going this is going to affect the art industry that way because the, when it comes to artists in general they are like when the, when they get in the in the sphere they are like rock stars, like when they climb the ladders. They aren't just these little guys. Like, we are little people. We are tiny. We are insignificant to some of these people. Like, they are so far above us in terms of what they work and what they make and how much money they get paid. <laughs> well, that's exactly the reason why they're going to die, too. Because, again, even if it's a subscription service, that subscription service is going to have to be really fucking high to be even remotely comparable with a top-tier artist. The problem with top-tier artists and AI competing with it is their signature styles. And AIs can try to imitate a signature style, it's just like anyone can try to imitate a signature style, but you will never make that signature style. Because I disagree. No, you, I, you I will highly not. disagree. You will not because succeed there's nothing there. unique about a style. It is something that can be copied by other human beings, and if another human being can copy it, a it fucking can't computer be, can. It can't be copied. It can be imitated, at best. Oh, it absolutely can be copied. Like for fuck's sake, people people make copies of um, of ancient artworks today that look identical to the point that you need like experts with thirty years of expertise to tell them apart. No, I'm not thinking that this is ever going to be a real issue. I think you're fucking blind. You may, maybe, maybe, but uh, I think it's just a fad. It's not really something that anyone should be particularly concerned about. <laughs> That's a good uh, rebuttal there, chat. Only a top-tier artist can duct tape a banana onto a wall, says Rapira. That's true. Yeah, no, I, um, I, I, again, I don't know if it'll be today. It won't be today. It won't be tomorrow. But when the time emerges that we can tell a software what to draw, most creators will use that. Like, I'll tell you this. If I could have made, like, my Vrax art by telling a computer to make it, I probably would. I wouldn't. It just lacks soul or any purpose to it. Well, that's the thing. Soul is one of those terms that uh, is basically, I don't know what I mean, but soul. And it is a valid argument in many cases, but in many cases, it's also an excuse. It's not an excuse. Like when we design uh, characters here. when we're yeah. working on them. No, when we design characters when we're working on I them, there is careful work put into it. You work side by side with an artist. There is nothing quite like it when you build a character. Uh, Look at that, Kyle. Well, drag, pull that on the screen. No, like that's that's not my point. You know that that is exactly your point because soul is objective. Is it's it's subjective. Like it's yeah, no, soul, different people value soul different things. Soul is subjective, but that's not what I'm talking about. Like when you make characters, when you make a world, when you make cityscapes, when you make landscapes, when you make an environment, when you do monster design, uh -huh. when you do but creature design. We're not design, talking about that. We're talking about art. That is art. That is part of art. No, no, no. You are you are talking the about the process work. of creation. Like, yes, but you're integrating it into it because you want it to be merged. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's just one part. You are talking about a composite work. There's work, no personality not. to AIs. Like, their art is just an algorithm. Their art is just a copy of something else. A hollow copy of that. It's impressive. Oh, yeah. It's cool. I think it's interesting, and I think it's actually worthwhile in terms of pursuing. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. But I don't think it's going to replace artists. I think that's extremely naive. Again, like what are you, the terms you are using, I think, is is, is disproves themselves because that fucking picture you've got up now, that ridiculous head with like the stupid shit out of it, that that is art. 
That is that is high art in the modern world. That shit is worth more than you and I combined twenty times over, and it's awful. Like it's a joke. I, and that that is the soul you're talking about. It is highly subjective, and I think if an AI is simply able to make a pretty picture, that'll be all anyone will care about. Ninety-eight of percent of people, at least. Maybe so, but the thing is, it doesn't really... I don't think it's going to be an issue. I don't think a lot of game companies or studios are ever going to switch over to it. It just doesn't seem reasonable. I think most probably will. Uh, when it, once it arrives at the point where you can literally tell it to make things, all but the big boys. And in fact, at that point, it will become a marketing... It'll become a sales strategy uh, that they use real artists... They will be like, like, our art is made by a quality, like a talented art team, and people will be impressed by that. And hell, you know what? It might very well even create better products overall. But for like the random random dev on Steam, for example, yeah, no, he's probably just gonna auto generate it. Yeah, well, that's just just an area we're gonna have to disagree on. But either way, the AI diffusion stuff is interesting. Because That's another good point. Can AI make a better show than Rings of Power? Yes. Feels like it That's was made too, by Kyle. an AI. It's art, Kyle. It's a composite piece, Kyle. It's subjective, and it wasn't done very well. Bring it over the hell. Either way, we're <laughs> not going to agree on this point, so we'll move on. But either way, it is an interesting conversation, because the AI stuff, regardless of whether you think it is going to replace everything or isn't, doesn't really matter at the end of the day because it will do what it will do. What really is interesting here is just the overall response in the community as a whole, as the art industry as a whole. Because there's different Fear. levels of response. Fear. Well, Justified fear. Mild annoyance, but the problem is, is artists are personalities. Things like Century Chan and Meriwether, regardless of whether you like them or not, they are they're more than just a, an art it's a person and that person because that's an interesting thing that's also happened in the art industry people are the art now people that actually make the art are actually becoming popular are actually becoming content creators like a lot of them like the remembrancer dude that we met on our discord he's pretty big now in the warhammer 40k sphere of art these people are like rock stars like content creators they have individuality something that no machine can ever have they have stories and legacies that are worth following. Well, that's, the, that's the thing. You're, you're thinking the machine will do this alone, and it won't, because the machine can't do this alone. The machine will do this. Like, Centurion Chan is an excellent example. Centurion Chan is something created by somebody who knows how to draw. Somebody else could have the idea for Centurion Chan but not be able to draw. They can now use AI art to draw that thing. And why wouldn't their ideas be just as valid? Mm, you're going to notice that there's going to be a difference whether you like it or not are you yes uh not like in the art terms will of, be identical terms, the humor will be identical not in terms of the it's art just that the guy can't draw it's not in terms of the art i'm not talking about the art people will re will reject it naturally there will be some why? people that'll be okay like, with it but there will be people if that'll the be upset. art is identical why will people reject one thing and embrace the other if you make a machine copy of someone else's art style and you're doing that like the the art oh, no, industry we're not talking about that we're talking about something like centurity chan Okay. Somebody so, likes something the same, uh, makes something the same style, but he can't draw, so he uses an AI to generate the picture. People won't like that. Some Why? people will, but because people are picky like that, people people got annoyed when they found out some people didn't make art. You. Yeah, no, that's the thing. But as soon as they find out, they get annoyed. Why would they find out? People figure stuff out. People are relatively clever. They figure shit out pretty quickly. See. I think this is a lot of stretching. Like, I think, again, I you think show it's stretching like in the other direction. AI but... to someone, a normal person will never guess it's AI generated. Listen, I might be in the minority here, but I just don't, I don't think this is a big problem. I know it's, it's easy to see from the, when you're on the outside and looking in, you're like, oh, that's how it works, but I just don't see it. Mm, that's a good point too, Benos. It's about the about the content, not the artist. Well, that's another thing too. Like, if the content is good, even if the art is subpar, content is still good.
I definitely think this will be a very big deal when it, is it uh, once it becomes competent enough. Let's see. Having thoroughly roasted and buried Carl, uh, we can... Where did I put it? Ah, yes. From one soulless hack to another, from one tentacle head to another tentacle head, we have Kevin Smith. Do you remember him, Carl? No. Well, I don't know who Kyle. Kevin Smith is. But he's created art, Kyle. I don't follow that in sphere. Fact, <laughs> Kevin Smith is a very interesting uh, individual because he used to create stuff that was generally lauded by the vast majority of people. Like, people liked Kevin Smith a lot. And like he's, he's he was in um, Silent uh, Silent Bob, like that was his his role. Everybody loved him in that. He uh, then transitioned into eating like a ridiculous diet or something, and he was the guy who made uh, the He Man show, which was special. And he completely ruined it. And oh, he's it's this talking. guy. Okay. I didn't know who Kevin Smith was. Now I know. Get him, guy. Get him, he's, guy. He's the guy with the... Where's the hat backwards, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. I know... I don't really watch TV or shows, so the whole... This sphere, I do not... Uh, I do not know anybody here. He is... Um, he had this interesting interview. Where he says, directing a Marvel or Star Wars movie is a fool's errand, fandom is rabid, and you'll piss somebody off. Now, nobody's ever asked Kevin Smith to direct a Star Wars movie, or hopefully a Marvel movie either. But his point is drawn from He-Man, where he made He-Man, and then he killed He-Man in the first episode of the He-Man show, and then he looks at the audience and goes, wow. You you didn't like that? Like, <laughs> complete confusion. And he makes Tila into an absolute fucking bitch of a woman. A genuinely horrible human being. Who, upon finally seeing Adam again in the afterlife, trying to resurrect him, her first response is like, it isn't, oh my god, Adam, I, I missed you. Like, it's been so long. I thought you were dead. Oh. No, it's... <laughs> Why didn't you think about the people you left behind when you were brutally murdered in combat, you pig? Probably dumb. Probably stupid. Uh, probably very dumb. And he is correct. The fandom is rabid, and you will piss somebody off. Why? Because you are ruining the thing they like. He even mentions in this article here that he was getting messages from people who were like, you ruined my childhood. And he's like, how dare you? It was just, it was just a cartoon. It, it didn't matter. Like, no, that's the thing. In the, in the same way that we talked about a little bit previously with the, uh, the, the dead, stupid, console, peasant video game. People played that game, and they have a relationship with that game because it was that game. You know, in many cases, it's also a bit of nostalgia. You know, you'll replay it, and it'll be jank, and you'll be annoyed. And you'll be, I don't remember it being jank, because that was just simply, you know, how things were done back then. It's the same when I'm, like, playing... Um, I replayed Red Alert a couple of years ago, and not having, like, an attack move button. Like, <laughs> oh, oh. Ah, uh, Yes. Jank. Tiberian Sun and Red Alert 2's engine unfortunately doesn't have an attack move button. Though it is partway coded, uh, you can press the button. Fairman told me how to trigger the key. Uh, it doesn't work very well, so I don't recommend using it. Sometimes they fight back. Most times they just sort of run through the enemy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it is, it's, it's, it is a trip revisiting those old games, and that's kind of why like I would be okay with form remasters of those things. Or not remasters necessarily, remakes or overhauls of the mechanics and skills to modernize the control schemes. Like Warcraft 1, that is an RTS, by the way, that I consider just not fun or not playable if, you're, if you weren't there to play it. That game, you have to micromanage your dudes, Arch, to tell them to defend themselves in that RTS. They will not defend themselves. They will stand there, and they will die. <laughs> Cancer. Yeah, but 
like a bitch. If you can't do basic micro, you shouldn't play video games. Barch, you try playing with that fucking interface and you tell me, you baby, shut up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's, I can tell you you're a baby now without playing it. Go it's play much it. Better. No, 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 no. Go play it, Mr. Big Big no, Shot. I, no, put I, it I can tell you you're a bitch now without playing it. It's I easy to bark. Better. It's harder to bite, isn't it, you little shit? <laughs> I'm biting you too. So I can bite but a little bit. <laughs> again, that's the thing. Uh, this this is the this is the lesson. This is the lesson that he's so fucking slowly seeping into these fucking idiots that if you take something people like and you piss on it, they're gonna be angry with you. It, it has taken five plus years, like it's five five to ten years for this lesson to begin to sink in. But it finally has. Like, Rings of Power, I bet you, we will look back at it and view it as a turning point because it was one of the first, like, major fuck your IP settings that we managed to turn into a just a normie negative. We managed to make it posh to hate the Rings of Power. And that is very, 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 very good because they finally took something that enough people loved and shat all over it. And finally, people then wake up and they smell the shit clamming their nostrils and they begin to realize that this isn't good. And they begin to yell at people. And maybe people like Kevin Smith, who have raped these things, will go, it's not worth it. I'm going to go and make my own setting. Go good. good. Please, thank you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like Kevin Smith can go and make Masters of the Kevin Smith somewhere else and nobody will care and everyone will be happy. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good thing. Like, ah, oh, man. I feel bad for people that, that are a big fan of the He-Man setting. Like, I didn't grow up on it. I barely know anything about it besides that He-Man says hey song. Like, that is the, that is, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the guy in the kitchen, like, stirring. I was just like, hey, hey. <laughs> that one is pretty good, though. That one's funny. <laughs> I said hey. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the worst part too is the, the fucking worst part of it all is there is that one trailer of of the he-man show with that with that like oh god where is it can i find it i we can't play it because it'll be fucking copyright struck because it's fucking netflix and they do that but if there people who have seen it will know there's this one trailer they released right before he-man and it's got this fucking kick-ass, like, power metal track in the background. It's so fucking good. And he's just got He-Man kicking fucking ass. And everybody who watched it was like, holy shit, it's actually going to be good, isn't it? Yep. And then it released, and they it turns out that was that was all the footage of He-Man in the entire show before it was a, he died. I remember seeing that trailer and going like, I don't know what He-Man is, but I'm actually somewhat interested yes i was like i'll watch it when the show's over because you know what it looks cool it looks like super 80s like sort of like you know that period of super like action man beating the shit out of things with a cool sword and barbarian action you know what? i'm all up for that and then i i heard what happened later where it was a bait and switch and then yes. i saw the memes like you died i had to live with your death and it's like oh my god oh he he died i'm sorry bitch he fucking died and you had to feel sad kill you <laughs> fucking that is annoying as shit <laughs> oh yeah like i'm i'm watching it secretly right now and fuck it's so good because you've got like i need a hero like i have to bow and it's so fuck i get i get fucking goosebumps from this fucking trailer, even knowing what a fucking boot and switch it was. See, that's like, cruel. Literally, if if Kevin Smith just made this trailer with fucking pumping power, like power rock music in the back, fuck, it would. Be... The He Man, like it would, it wouldn't just have the He Man fandom. It wouldn't just revitalize He Man because let's be fair, that's a fairly small fandom. It would have turned He Man into a fucking cultural phenomenon, like. I'm looking at the performance of the trailer right now. The trailer performance on YouTube is unbelievable. Over the course of uh, of a month, it gained like 4 million views. Like, everyone loves the fuck out of the trailer. Mm-hmm. I mean, good trailers are real... Like, that's another art in, in all, as a whole. Like, putting together a good trailer is actually really... 
really something that's important. And the fact that you hook somebody with your trailer is a huge win for you. And then to blow it all. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's the other problem too the bait and switch uh thing that's been going on lately where it's like it's going to be called this like thor loving you know gay stuff and oh, uh, love and thunder was awful and it's like it's 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 like we're going to use the name of the popular character to try to promote a new character to replace that popular character because that actor is too expensive and this actor or actress is kind of cheap and kind of shit so you know we'll promote this one instead <laughs> yep it's fucking awful it's a terrible strategy, and it's also just lying. Like, it's okay to have a twist in your story. It's okay to surprise in some areas where it's like, oh, I didn't expect that was a really cool twist there. But it's another thing to completely undermine the setting. It's like, if, it'd be like watching a Star Wars show, and it's not about Star Wars at all, you know, and or. <laughs> it's in the name. There should, it should be about the thing at the very least, the object of the source, the material. It needs to be at center stage. At least at one point, right? You fucking hope so. <sighs> but you would? they are not going to do that because they want to promote their little shit. They, they, everybody's got their own vested interests interests nowadays. Everybody wants to be the next thing. Everybody's like, oh, I'm going to ride off the coattails of Tolkien, but I'm going to launch my own career by doing it my way and turning Sauron and Galadriel into a a, a romance thing because of my weird fucking fan fiction where. Sauron was secretly in love with Gladriel, and it was the, it was the reason that she turned him down as to why he turned evil. Which honestly just awful. makes Gladriel kind of a terrible person. Like, how many people died because of her? <laughs> I'm gonna have to make a a video on how the Rings of Power did romance because I've kind of yes. realized progressives don't understand how to make romance stories. They don't. They they <laughs> just don't. Like, Galadriel, the galadriel Halbrand romance, I didn't even know it was a fucking romance until the show told me. Yeah, I mean, I had some suspicions because they were, like, flirting with each other at weird points. It's like, if you flirt a little bit and then you try to bang, it's like, okay. Or, the, or, or flirt a little bit, marry me. It's like, that's not, that's a bit fucking, that's quick. <laughs> that's... You know what, you know what, fuck it, fuck it. I'll, I'll risk the copyright uh, claim. No, cause... Marge, don't do it. No, no, no. This, this is for something else. This one might actually sneak past the censors. I okay. don't know, but we'll see. Because if it was that song, um, I, would not, I would not open it. Are yes, you sure? Because we have so much we can remember and learn from the old stylish shit. So you were a recent convert to Transformers, aren't you? Yes, I played the uh, War for Cybertron games, and I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. Uh, did you? Uh, you can actually mute this one. I guess because uh, see, it's because okay. people should watch it. You people should definitely watch this. The touch, like you got the touch from the Transformers movie. Google it on YouTube. It's fucking great. You've got the touch. Yeah, I watched this movie. Oh god, Luke it's so showed good. It to me. It's so fucking good. And holy shit, is this a cool little fucking scene too? You've got Optimus Prime. He's zooming about. You've got the the Septicons. And all of it's actiony. All of it's cool. Shit is happening. Lasers are being fired. Like, man, it is brilliant. And compare this to to modern day entertainment. Also, it's. Oh, I think fuck. this is based on the style here. This is traditional animation. Yes, this is old school shit. Like, like this movie is from. I don't even know what it is. It's old. This stuff is handcrafted. There's a, there is something beautiful about this. The way it's shaded is exceptional because it makes everything look actiony and dramatic man like i wasn't even around for this show i wasn't even alive and i saw this like years later and this stuff actually makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up like this is oh yeah this is amazing amazing animation amazing art and visuals handcrafted too like what a absolute treat i didn't like it the part is, where he died though I thought the part where he died was stupid. <laughs> and the thing is, this is something that um, this is this is something that people are beginning to relearn a little bit, a little bit. So, oh God, I am overusing this example, but well, it's a good one, so I'm going to keep using it. But in in Edge Runners, Cyberpunk Edge Runners. They mix in a lot of music track, like full music track with vocals and singing and stuff. And it really elevates the scene because good music 
along with good visuals, is almost always a fucking victory. And it's something we almost completely forgot. And yet they used to do this all the time. Like you got the touch with the whole Autobot Decepticon fight scene is great. It is. You've got the touch. <laughs> You've got... It is from that era too. By the yep. way, on that note, you really, 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 really should play the War for Cybertron games. They are really good. And they are, tragically, never going to get the third uh, part of their trilogy. But it's actually pretty cool. You learn a lot more backstory about Cybertron, or at least in that interpretation of it, and the war that goes on. Very epic. Very... It feels like a big war, honestly. Like a massive war with massive fucking monster war machines. It's it, was. It, was a, it was a fucking global civil war. Yee. A war for Cybertron. Like, seriously. It pisses me off. The more I learned about this fucking Transformers universe, and then I started to think about the Michael Bay films, and I understand. Oh. I understand. Oh. I didn't know. I had no idea. Now I know. They should have just made a War for Cybertron, like, fucking trilogy movie series. That would have been fucking amazing. Fuck this human shit. Get the humans out of here. Humans are gay. Gross. Who cares about them? They are. The Transformers are so cool. They're like these cool machine people. And they just beat the shit out of each other, and they got these cool powers. Like, there's the fucking flying machines. Like, fuck. And there's also these big goddamn, like, Titan things. Like that one Megatron or whatever the fuck. Not Megatron, the, the city oh, one. Megon. Yeah, those. And the other big things. Like, planetoid, like, life form. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> that universe is fucking nutty putty. I didn't even know that shit was about it. I always thought Transformers was like this little toy that transforms into a robot and then transforms into a little car. And that's like, that's the thing. That's all it's about. No. Like, the, the actual lore behind it's retarded. Like, Arch, you need to start a Transformers lore channel. It's actually worth covering. There's some crazy stuff in that universe. Definitely something uh, you guys should check out. I dismissed no, that Omega, way too early. Omega. Omega Supreme. That was his fucking name. Omega Supreme, Metroplex, uh, Chat says Trypticon. Yeah, Metroplex, yeah. yep. See, I, like, if you told me these names, like, five years ago, or before I even knew what these are, I'd be like, what the fuck are you talking? Metroplex. Like, what the fuck's a Metroplex? <laughs> it's a fucking city. <laughs> yes, he's a literal fucking city that transforms. It's like, holy shit, he's huge. <laughs> he is. <laughs> he's fucking gargantuan. But yeah, no, Transformers is cool, guys. And if you haven't fucking seen it, even though you, like the Michael Bay films might have turned you off from it, uh, ignore that and take a look at it. As, check out the War for Cybertron games. Excellent video games. Excellent. It's such a tragedy. They're not on Steam anymore. Oh, that. Another point that we need to talk about is eventually is games that get caught in limbo, which get removed from Steam, like the Battle for Lord of the Rings video games and other movie game licenses. There's such a fucking tragedy. Chat. So many games are lost to the t like sands of time that most people can't find anymore. These these games are also a part of it. Grimlock. Grimlock's a fucking dinosaur. He goes, Rear. Yes. Sadly, the Dinobots don't have a combination thing. You do get to play as the... Uh, yeah, no, they don't, sadly. You do get to play as them, though, in the Transformers game. You get to play as Grimlock. You also fight the, Inceptic or the Insecticons. I didn't know what those were, but they're bug people. Because, uh, well, I think it was... Um, they was It was the, the, the fucking... Um... The Decepticons that figured out how to do like the combination thing first on on Earth, I think, because they had like uh, the Destructicons or the Construct the, the Destructicons, because they were they were f like four or five of them who were like uh, construction specialists, and they could turn into a big boy robot, like a mega robot, I, whose name I do not remember now. Book says the Dinobots yeah, can turn into the Beast. They do that actually get a like big thing. New idiot fluff, and I don't think I like that. Barge. The beast. That sounds very gay. I don't like it. Hold on, Barge. Has Transformers lore been ruined? Chat, yeah, don't answer that. Don't ruin yeah. this for me. No. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> oh, Devastator was his name. Yeah. A oh, Devastator. Transformers has some cool fucking shit, and the Michael Bay stuff was just awful. Also, Just I've been trying off. to convert Barch to watch Ross Ross's channel, Accursed Farms. And yes, I know who Ross is. I'm actually a big admirer of his channel. Just wanna Weirdo. 
Just want to touch him a little. Jazz like, what? <laughs> He's actually quite... There's a lot of things that he does. He's actually working on like a, a, a personal creative project too that I'm very sympathetic towards. Sympathetic. You simp. Yeah. Uh, unironically now, for Ross, yes. Before you simp any harder, Kyle, we have Super Chats and the Barrow Trauma is growing further and further away with every Super Chat. Oh yeah, we're doing a Barrow Trauma after this stream. Barrow Trauma. Now read Supers. And the first says Kyle is a homosexual. I agree. Second you one guys also are Kyle's so homosexual. Mean there's, just, there's just 20 messages of that. Now, you guys can tease me and be mean to me, but you have to apologize afterwards. That's the new rule. Everyone apologize. Form a giant line. We can start now. Okay, keep going. <laughs> See? Yeah. Here. I found a funny. I found a funny that will amuse chat whilst I do this. There you go. They can they can look at that um that picture I sent you for a while. That'll amuse them. Is that I don't know if I can pull that up, Arch. <laughs> oh. But Tragic. I'm not gonna try to like I'm. Uh, it's pseudo censored. Barch. I don't want to get your channel in trouble. <laughs> I don't want to get. Maybe you know. See, maybe you shouldn't be trusted to do the Archcast stream. Maybe I'll handle it for you. Maybe you can't be trusted. I I think I'm the only one who can be trusted. I'm it's the only one looking out for you. I should have probably said no to the 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 uh, the touch. Like, I, I feel bad now. I'm worried that the channel's going to get hit from that. I cannot show that. No, no, no. No, no. Cannot. There... No, chat. No. I. It's too obvious. It'll get Arch in trouble. It'll get Arch in trouble now! <laughs> no, I'm not getting him in trouble. We're not doing it. Chat, no. He was pretty adorable, though. Why do I care uh, about his channel? He's my Alec friend. Jones' punishment is punitive in the extreme. The people that caused 2008 recession and caused 10,000 people to commit suicide and despair on average paid less than 100 million. Well, yeah, like, comparatively, this is a joke. Again, a uh, billion dollars. It's ridiculous. It is actually a joke. Uh, Glow in the Dark also says, The elites designed this courtroom from the jury to judge to destroy him. His own lawyer may even be on, in on it based on how much he messed up. Yes, he needs a new lawyer. Like, fire. Fire. Okay, I'll compromise. What? Hold on. I'll post it. I'll post it in Arch's Discord under the... Um, in the... Oh, God. What room can I post it in? In the Arch Discord without getting in trouble. With your know. moderators. I don't know. I'll post it there and I'll post it in my server as well. Arch, where, what channel is okay? I don't know. Uh, I'm going to tell people I have permission to post this. I have permission from Arch to post this. Don't yell at me again. <laughs> That's so weird, though. They already yelled at me before, but it makes it sound funny. Mukwat says, It was epic when Alec Jones called the judge a tyrant when he took the stand. I love it. I mean, he was not lying. Student of History says, If the government is investigating you, it isn't to find the truth to nail your balls to the wall. I live 15 minutes from Waterbury CT. This was a done deal from the start, and yet no faith on appeal. I, I, I can't believe that they'll let it go, but oh, we'll see. I also posted in the Big Green Bunch minutes. discussion. There. There, chat. You Says, can as Ogryn are so widespread before Big Yi expansion, are they Dark Age tech? Not evolved genetic manipulation shock troopers? Nah, they're probably normal. Uh, they're just abhumans. Arch, give big. me an invite oh. link for your Discord. I don't know. Hurry. Give busy. me... Give it. Give me Give me an invite link. Fine, you're busy. Here. Go to that one, go to the hashtag bickering bunch discussions, and I posted the image that Arch wanted me to post there. You can look at it there. Now hand me your link too, because people probably want to go to your Discord rather than mine in the long term. So Gib, Gib. Gib. TF Allspark says, hello, Arch and Gibbs. Boy, it sure glows here. <laughs> that aside, here's a reminder of Christopher Everard, best yearly project coming this December. Shill it. Hey, Carl. Oh, Chris! 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Chris, 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 Chris. Chris is a really nice guy. He's uh, a Belgian lad that we call French because I keep forgetting because accents are hard for me. Uh, it sounds basically French, okay? It's not my fault that I constantly call him French. Chris Everett is working on his own uh, fantasy IP. He's wrote a couple of books and uh, has some really awesome artwork. He's actually putting together an art book, uh, which I do not have a link for. Hold on. I'm going to attempt to find one real quick. Uh, Chris, where are you? You little shit. Meanwhile, Artemis Fowl says Pfizer called 10,000 women to develop cancer with the medication Prempro and will settle for the same amount that Jones is being forced to pay. Yeah, reasonable. Well, that was only women. You know. We should invite Chris on the barge cast, though. Yes, I think that's a thing we must do. Uh, it's it's in Belgian. He's going to make an English version. He, or he did say that he was thinking about making an English version. Don't want to confirm here. But you can find it uh, here. There's a little preview of it. And I'll put a link in. No, not the Discord. Barch, you haven't sent me your Discord yet. No. I need to get that pinned so I can chill you for you because somebody has to. There. You can check it out. He's a super cool dude. He's interviewed Arch and I. Very nice guy. Very chill. Please check out his stuff. Okay, yeah, carry on. I'm done. I'm done interrupting you. Glow in the dark says when the government approves, you can cause a billion dollars in damage, cough BLM and be praised. Going against the government, your traffic ticket leads to death penalty. Well, yes. Pretty much. It is a ridiculously harsh fine. Uh, Mark DeShame says, This isn't the only court where the judge ignores the law and just makes it up. Welcome to political law, better known as party law. Yes. And this is also why courts need an oversight system, and it needs to be a fucking harsh one. Like, basically, if you are a judge, you need to read and reread the law like 17 times for a verdict, and you need to make a fucking explanation, a detailed explanation for how and why you've come to this solution. You need to write a goddamn essay for every goddamn single fucking trial. And I don't care if you're busy. I don't give a shit. You're condemning people's lives here. You do the fucking paperwork. Mark Same says, the problem is our judges come from lawyers. Well, that's a stupid idea. You should remove them. Go the Dark says, if it is a state charge, it will be a while to get to Supreme Court. SCOTUS usually takes their time with state causes unless there is outside pressure. Well, at least then Alex won't have to pay immediately. Uh, Oliver Nord says, at a point during one of his trials, Jones was absent of court for medical reasons, couldn't leave home. Court prosecutor pointed he was doing his weekly stream from his studio while court was in session. Just at least a bit of a churlish thing. Glow in the dark. Mainstream media defamed many people, and they don't even pay a billion, even though they have more reach and legitimized by the people in charge. That's also true. Glow in the Dark also says, if Alex Jones was railroaded anymore, they would have to build more infrastructure to accept the amount of trains they would need. Poor little Alex. Genuinely poor mm -hmm. little Alex. It is actually very sad. Beskar Armour. They made Alex even more powerful in the end. Oh, if he survives. I hope so. <laughs> What does it kill you at I would ask, is there a GoFundMe? But the problem is, <laughs> it's reach a million dollars. Which, honestly, with his outreach, maybe his meme power and influence on the meme culture is so great. I don't know. Like, he's Alex Jones. He's like the meme man. He's also banned from every single platform, so, uh. I think that's fucking... I don't think people should be... A, a part of me is like, I understand, like, banning. Like, okay. If you're a pedo, yeah, okay. Banning. Good. But, like, it should be only extreme circumstances like that that we should be ever banning anybody from, a like, a platform with which to speak. And even then, like, we gotta make sure extra careful that we make sure it's only those people. We can't be liberal about these things. Mark DeShame says, Arch, make Norwegian lotus eaters. 
There's not enough base people in Norway to staff an office, I'm afraid. Bar cheaters. <laughs> Making any business in Norway is just a very stupid, stupid thing to do. I don't have Arch's Discord link. Arch hasn't given it to me. I would give it to you if I had it. I'm sorry, chat, but the blonde bimbo is holding out. Kyle hasn't paid me yet. It's... I'm not paying you to do that. <laughs> Oh, somebody sent me a link. Oh, wow. I, was just... oh, so I, I quite like the little picture of the dildo. Lord of the Dark says, Yes, parasocial interactions is weird. I know you do. Nervous laughing. Ha ha, by Kibbs Notch. Chat looks away and whistles. Totally not a problem here. Uh, Carl abuses it, you know, because he tries to be a woman on the internet. I don't try to be a Lord woman. Lord says, 50-50 is <laughs> more a porn split. Great for Twitch. Of course it is great for Twitch. YouTube will increase rates 45% cut for them. I'm sure they will. Why won't they? WMC Wolverine. Hey, Arch and Gibbs. I'm glad to catch another live Arch cast, and I hope you two are doing awesome. I just picked up a Steyr Aug A3 and a Sig Sauer 55 SWAT. No. Those are candies, YouTube. And we can't speak about guns on the internet. That'll get you deep on latch formed. Uh, Glow the Dark says, Remastered games is uh, like black and white movies being sold as a colorized movie. It won't lead to new inspiration. Some rando is going to hit it big and they will copy it. These people use that formula. See, that's kind of true too. Kind of like I mean, tracing people's images is basically theft and should be punished Hold on. gas chamber. Hold on. But remaking video nah. games is fine. Yeah, remaking is actually fine because they do new stuff to the mechanics. Remastering is a completely different field. Remastering is what Warcraft 3 Reforged got us. Ugh, ugh. Remaking is like what the Resident Evil 2 uh, game did, where it basically takes an old game concept and then tries to rev uh, to modernize it in unique and interesting ways. Like the Dead Space remake isn't just a remaster. They're completely overalling the, how the enemies behave. They're giving Isaac Clarke some actual voice lines to interact with the other characters, which is really cool. And they're also going to revamp the combat system, as well as try to make the guns usable and make the game actually playable on PC. Because I'd like to point out that the the other one, the Dead Space one, you need to fix it. You need to fix it. I put them uh, the links on how to fix it if you guys want to play a spooky game. Dead Space is great. It's in the description on one of my streams. Just go and steal them out of there. You want to fix the frame rate problem? You are not frame rate problem. You want to fix the mouse acceleration problem? Because God fucking help me. That port is fucking atrocious. It's it's a disgrace. It needs a remake. <laughs> you you can't play it, Arch. It's terrible. It's garbage. You have to mod it in order to fix the damn thing to even run it right. In cases like you. this, I say are exceptions to the rule. So oh, I shouldn't play hit that. Like a woman. Yeah, but I really love I love the Dead Space franchise, and I really really want it to succeed. Four hundred twelve. Cadia says, "Command Conquer Remasters was great. Just finished it today, and now give me Red Alert Two and a Tiberian and Sun Remaster." By the way, new Internet Arch, you can stream now. I can. There will be hentai. No objections were heard. Good. Mark James says, How many times did Spock chastise Uhuru for low performance? None. But Uhuru chastised Spock a lot. And completed Spock's ideas, because Spock's a bit of a tard. <laughs> the Dark says, <laughs> Orville is okay, but it has its problems story-wise. Well, the problem is, the first two seasons of the Orville weren't even written. They were ad-libbing half of it, which was a very terrible idea. But, you know, they were stupid and awful and dumb. And season three is much better. Uh, Mark Ashamed says, Computer AI notices titties. Mm. I think anything that draws tits will eventually become quite famous in its own right. Scarfy the Strange, shut it, Fairman. Oh, Thanks God. Up. Yes, we played, we streamed Dark Tide this morning, and Barch was a little hungry, so he was cranky. And I had a headache. And you were far fucking cranky than me, bitch. No, you guys all ganged up and bullied me for like a good 30 minutes. Now, to be fair, it was deserved. I was riling both of you up, and it was only fair that uh, you both got revenge. But but we got to let that go now, okay? It's time to be nice to me. <laughs> I don't think so. But yes, we were screaming Fairman, and Fairman was making us all feel better. So we kept screaming at him. Fairman! And Fairman was getting really agitated. It was kind of funny. 
Moxon says, sorry for the non-safe work. Here's the edit. It is a tit with a square now. Rex Familia Vito says, okay, I admit it. I blew up Nord Stream just to make problems for the Swedes. It was the Americans. Cock the Strange. I'm calling it now. This AI is going to be software as a service. Yes, probably. But hey, it'll be popular. Prof. Sil Sir Johan, thought on Musk potentially rewoking Ukraine Starlink. Well, revoking. Like, he was giving it as a gift in the first place, so him simply no longer choosing to pay millions to give the gift? It's not really a revoking, it's more of a, like, come on. I thought you would be finished with this stupid shit by now. I don't really mind. Uh, Rangi. AI won't fully replace artists, it will replace the lower tier of artists. Others will have to step up or be replaced. Those with skill will adapt. The others will starve to death and become sewage workers. Shadow Fox 2300. Depression plus alcohol equals super chats for the botch and the kids. Shadow Fox 2300. Depression is good. Alcohol is better. Uh, Mark James says AI art direct to NFTs. Yes. That's how you can make good money on it. You just tell it to draw monkeys. Oh my god, Arch. We can use the AI to make our own NFT line. We'll call it the Barch cast or the Barch. The Barch line. It's various forms of Barches wearing silly hats. Yes. No, I think I will call it the Retard series and just have pictures of you. No. If it's going to have any pictures, it won't it's going to be look you. retarded. <laughs> they look entirely no. natural. No, no, it's the Barch, and he wears silly hats. Like, look at his, look at his profile right now, chat. See that, see a little fucking blonde bimbo. Like, imagine him with like a little Santa hat, and then one with like a little clown hat, a little like Hong Kong corn for his little nose. Like, that would be great. A little Batman outfit. Oh my God, that's retarded. <laughs> NFTs were one fuck of a scam. I'll say that much. People bought them for thousands of dollars, and now they're worth nothing. Oh my God. Hold on, Barch. Pin in that. Well, actually, no, not pen. We're talking about that. So, is that still a thing? Do people still buy the NFTs? Are they still doing that? I think it's pretty much dead now. Oh my god. Thank god. I haven't seen it in a while. It was a weird, dumb, stupid trend. And you know what? The artist that pulled that off? Congrats. You know what? You, you're winners. I'm not even gonna be mad at you, because you just made a killing of money off a bunch of brain-dead morons. But at the same time, the AI is going to absolutely thrash low-skilled artists and absolutely destroy them. Anyone who overcharges, like you guys, you're fucked. You're absolutely fucked. That I'm not even going to dispute. You guys are done. You guys are over. <laughs> you're fucked. You're gone. <laughs> Shut up, folks. 23. Zero says, Narch and Kibbles. Give me more. But what more? Actually, Philip Moore afterwards says, Hey, I is moving into animation. Already confirmed. Anyone who said it's not going to replace artists is coping. Spend hundreds of dollars or get something for free. That's good enough. Yep, no, I agree. Coping and seething. Coping and seething. It's so good. That fucking meme song. Google it, chat. You'll be very it's, pleased. It's it's quite good. <laughs> And like this... it's almost DuckTales levels goods where you kind of can sing the whole thing and Duck you don't Tales. even understand why Ooh. you can <laughs> everybody eh, 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 eh. DuckTales almost <laughs> Commander 248 no AI could replace art like that made by Murata for One Punch Man that's true that is really really awful just how detailed it is it will be impossible for the AI none of these AI can make such detailed realistic backgrounds no 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 they can in fact, they'll be able to copy it exactly. They'll be able to make more detailed backgrounds. They'll be able to make little mice and shit pop up in the background and wink at you, and you won't even know it. Literally, there'll be a collection of three pixels over in the corner that basically says, fuck you. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> Mark James says, also, climate change activists threw tomato sauce on a Van Gogh painting. You mean criminals threw tomato sauce on a Van Gogh painting. You're welcome. Oh, chat's mentioning this. Who did the who? What artists did you use for the Badab art? Uh, somebody, Damn. multiple somebodies. Or I think we we know that one. Aren't we talking to that one? Sure. We aren't, are we? We're not talking. We're not using that one. You killed him, didn't you? He's like he didn't finish his commissions on time, so we had to die. 
It's like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Rosa also copes in the scenes by saying, there is a special level of detail that you get from a commission art that you will never get from an AI. Also, less artists lead to less variety from the AI it leads to continued decrease in art quality. Good. We'll end up in a black hole of art where we'll reset everything to zero so that even like a yellow line on a black background will be art again. <laughs> That'd be great. Actually, the thing is, the AI will absolutely, I, I do think it will erase the amateur artists, the ones, especially the ones that overcharge. Like they, their days are numbered. Their days are coming to a close. Artists are going to have to be nice to commissioners now. <laughs> Some of those artists aren't going to like that. I don't want to be nice to Jim. <laughs> Too bad. Scott the Strange says, Can AI make a better show than the Rings of Power? Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, the problem is, is Rings of Power is just a really bad show done by people that are very Rings inept. Rings of Power was already made by a pair of fucking AIs. Yeah, so it's it's honestly, you won't really notice the difference. <laughs> If anything, the AI might do something that's slightly funny because it's so out of left field, you won't even see it coming. You're like, oh, that's... Like it'll scour so the internet for, for random memes and it'll pick up the morbing one, and then Galadriel will just be, like, morbing. She looks at him and is like, funny. it's morbing time. And you're like, okay, that's a bit out of place, but okay. <laughs> okay. And then she morbed. <laughs> Eric Arneson sent something very spicy, and so his message was retracted. The Commander248 says, can AI generate designs, replace, and in engineers? Uh, in fact, that will be way easier for the AI to replace than artists, because engineering, you just need to provide it with a series of tolerances and specs, and it could probably generate uh, blueprints, no issues. Now, oh you'd God. probably have to have an engineer go over the first few variants just to make sure. It's like, you forgot to nail this to the wall. Whoopsie. Yeah. Like, Whoopsie, poopsie. There are House some things by. that you're also going to want at least, like, integration. Like, I do think that the AI is going to be integrated with humans. Because, like factories, you kind of want somebody there to actually make sure it's doing the thing. And <laughs> new jobs will be created because of it. But old, some old jobs will be erased. As with all things. As with all things. Mm -hmm. True. As with all things. Yeah. If you don't agree with me, you're going to die. As with all things. <gasps> he thinks he's got me on something, but he doesn't. He's just blonde and blue-eyed, which makes him weak and inferior. <laughs> Philip Moore says, you don't get it. AI will replace everything, even you. AI influencers and streamers will compete with real people in the future. <laughs> well, of course they will, eventually. But the thing is, at least doing what we do here requires improvisation. And that that is the hardest thing for an AI to do, improvisation. That's the difficult part. But there will absolutely be AI streamers in the future. Hell, filthy, dirty, reject VTubers are already a kind of that. Oh my god. I, I mean, VTubers aren't really AIs. They're more so uh, just e-thoughts rebranded. Like, our VTuber That's friends, true. we actually talked to them about this, and they, they all agreed, too. Which is great, because it means I'm right, and I'm vindicated for like, once. The problem is, in reality, <laughs> Zoomy's like a 250-pound gorilla woman from uh, Puerto Rico or something. She's not so Zoomy after all. <laughs> <She's not> nope. <laughs> the only, only way she zooms is if you push her down a hill. <laughs> and therefore... <laughs> <laughs> I hope she watches this. Somebody send it to her. <laughs> and therefore, you know, he's a YouTuber. Fair enough. Down you go. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> That's mean. I didn't start. I didn't say it, Zumi. You can't be mad at me. You have to be mad at him. <laughs> but yes, eventually AI will replace everything. Everything will be automated eventually. But again, improvisation. That is the difficult part. That's what's going to take the longest. Which is why. We are actually relatively future-proofed in our line of work. Yeah. Unlike you uh, fast food workers at McDonald's, looks at Kyle. Hey, I don't work at McDonald's. I never have. And that was only in high school. I worked you at worked Burger at... King. I worked I for the... Have. I worked at Burger King. Yeah, no, I oh, worked you at... fucking pleb. No, no, you... no. There's a difference. This is a point of plebeian pride. No, here. I served the crown. I was a member of the crown's royal court. I was an ambassador of the king. 
That was an actual title, by the way. <laughs> That's I know. So cringe. You're very cringe. An ambassador of the fucking king. You know what that means? I go around and I'm like, well, how are you? How are you feeling today? You having a good time? And then if they said no, I'm like, well, that sucks. <laughs> Would you like some free drinks? Will that fix it? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, there I go. Listen, there was a guy who got in a car accident. I'm like, uh, you want some coffee? And I gave him free coffee. I mean, I don't know what else to do to him. <laughs> I don't know what else. I need to give him coffee. My poor David Bastard is probably low on sugar or something. Get a sugar cola. I got free coffee. Arnold Fowl says, Don't take my talking point, Kibbs, you idiot, idiot thief. It's not your talking point. When we talked about it together, Artemis, it's a two I, people conversation. I, don't think so. I think. I think this is this is stolen valor. This is I sabotage. Out and Meriwether. Also, the AI threatens mediocre artists who charge too much, and they know it. Kyle has been exposed as this an This is ID. something we have talked about. You don't even. You adopt 90% of my idea. slogans because I repeat them at nauseum. And then you, a being the impressionable little shit, repeat them. And then I get a accused. Stealer of the I get accused of stealing my own phrases for my own channel. Like I have phrases I repeat at nauseum. Like it's ogre now. Like Bart just started doing it. There was a point when she actually yelled at me. He's like, Kibsh, if you say that one more fucking time, I'm going to fucking hurt you. And then you stopped. It I worked. Did. I won. It worked for like a week. <laughs> I'm still working, you brilliant. But it came work. back with a vengeance, and now you do it occasionally. Also, I want to play more Manor Lord. I just want to point that out. My little bitch needs to put up the demo again and make you a save game function, little bastard. Hey, he called an ambulance. He called a fucking ambulance or whatever already. I just didn't know what to do with him because he was in the lobby, and I was like, I don't. I'm not paid enough to fucking like go out there and fix a car. I'm paid to stand in this store and fucking sell cheeseburgers. Like, leave me alone. <laughs> leave me alone. And I'm barely well, the dog says, that. As weird as it sounds, people can tell subconsciously what is artificial and what is organic art. So I think organic art would last longer in popularity and desire, but AI pictures will be like junk food. I don't believe people have that innate ability. Now, they have the innate ability to, de to, to detect the uncanny valley, but the thing is, the AI will be... If you do anime art... Already, the AI is good enough to fool 90% of people. And it'll be good enough to, feel, uh, to fool uh, most people. Like, Slatimus will look at it and go, like, this is quality. We'll have 3D art where you can actually touch the booba, and people will forget all about this silly debate. Like, I can touch the booba? Yes, it fluffs in your hands. It fluffs in your hands. Oh, hold on. Uh, Kyle, entertain chat for about three minutes. I need to throw some grief at Dev because he's streaming and I made it into a habit now. Wow. It's okay, chat. It's my Archcast now. It's Kibcast. Ooh, it sounds like a fucking telecom company or something. Like, ooh, Kibcast. It works sometimes. <laughs> That's our slogan. Not a very good slogan, mind you, but it's a slogan nonetheless. And I take pride in our slogans. I take pride in my company, you know, even if it is a ramshackle thing. So how's the little chat, the chat behaving? Now, chat, we need to discuss more important things, okay? Dark Tide is kind of potato, and I'm kind of sad about this. You need to fix it. I'm not a big fan of the fact that there's a hub, and that hub is kind of cancer. It serves no purpose. Like, there's no hopping around being a little monkey. You, you can't climb around the tower. It's fucking agitating. All you do is run in circles. And I really don't like that. I don't think you like that either. Actually, no. I do. I think I will tell you you don't like that because I can be decided. I decide how you feel. You don't get to decide that anymore. It's my jurisdiction. Take Critical Orc Theory says, Oi, I just made an AI to make orcish art. The more cogitators believe in the art, the more real it is. Yeah. I wasn't paying attention. What? <laughs> Hiccups. People are adding it. Says, Hideki Kamiya just got suspended from Twitter. Oh, that's good Ooh. for him. Congratulations. Who? Hiroki who? What the fuck is a Hiroki? Kamoa. What's the context behind this? Why um, are we... <laughs> he's, he's doing something with Bayonetta. One of the Bayonetta voice actors called him a faggot, and that got him uh, deplatformed. Wait. As it should. It got the guy who got called the fake got the platform. That's great. Bayonetta voice actor Helena Taylor asks fans to boycott Bayonetta 3 
And then the executive director, which was that guy, responded to that, saying you're a lying whore, but slightly more diplomatic. And then he got eaten from Twitter. That's really dumb. Why are they boycotting it? I don't. Oh no, he's uh, Boogie's lying. He's not actually uh, yeeted from Twitter. Uh, they've uh, slapped one of those bad boy things on him, where there's like this account is temporarily limited because of suspicious activity. He has to sit and time out and think about his action. Yes. Basically. Sadly, he only writes in his retarded little crowfoot language, so I can't really tell what he's saying. Well, unfortunate. Beskar Armor says, It doesn't matter how much soul is in something. When it comes to business content creators, it is the efficiency and cost savings AI will win every time. Yes, yes. Defeat Kyle. Defeat him. It's Defeat the him. consumer that actually makes the money. Defeat him. That Break kind of thought control. process has got us to where we are now. If you don't yeah, listen to me, we're all going to die, chat. You have to listen to Kibbs. I'm the only hope you have of living. Now, Boog, you can go on Twitter and figure out what exactly happened, and then you can tell me, and then I can steal that and make a video about it. Yeah, cool. Boog, why don't you do an actual fucking research by posting stuff? Besides posting yeah. half-baked things, Boog, you old yeah. boomer. Yeah. You, you know what he's saying right now? He's like, oh, see, senior KFC. Like, he always does. He always does that. Every fucking time. <laughs> he owes me tacos, by the way. Isaac Stanley donates $1. Oops. Thank you very much. Both with no message. Armish Fowl says, By the way, Kibbs, I fully believe this will cripple the art industry on Twitter, as most art commissions are hentai-related. Once a serviceable furry art AI is created, it will be a bloodbath. To be fair, that's a good thing as well, because yes. the moment an AI arrives that I can go like, AI, create a cuckold hentai. And uh. it just makes like 2,000 pages of NTR, I'll be like, hmm, thank you. And I'll never have to go to EX hentai again. Oh, the barge! You're. You just had to say that. You just had to. He just did that. He just did that, Chen. Like art, <laughs> like AI. Uh, AI. What will the AI be called? The AI will be called uh, Artemis. There you go, Artemis. Like Artemis, create two thousand pages of NTR. Like burr, burr. Would you like to print this? No. <laughs> I mean, at least it asked before it printed. <laughs> Where would I print to if you don't have a printer? It'd be funny if you just hear your printer start up in the background. Or even better, is this a shared printer? Like oh, you hear it in no. the living room, go like, mur, mur. and you're supposed to say, "What the fuck?" <laughs> That's cool. quite terrible. It's a very large penis you have there. It's quite uh, phallus-shaped, or <laughs> phallic in nature. I don't know what the fuck to say at this point. Uh, we need a good translation AI, that's what we need. RC Pop says, Little Monkey Kibbs, take some shekels and say Neoth. Well, technically I do get a portion of that, so yeah. Neoth. 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 Neoth is cringe. I hate you for saying <laughs> that. It is pretty cringe. Right. Reguline says Buru Nyoth Buru Buru What the fuck's wrong with you? Yeah, I think Barch can't be trusted with streaming. I think I have to do it for him. Otherwise he's gonna get himself banned. Like he just can't control himself. He's so spicy. It's a miracle I haven't been banned because of him. Crime any sake. It's only a matter of time, really. Fuck, you're gonna owe me big time when that happens. <laughs> oh, what's gonna happen to me? <laughs> Alexa, make it. I don't know why, but I looked over my shoulder because I used to have one of those things. I was like, no, I almost said that out loud, Lexa McKenzie. <laughs> <laughs> it's what fucking... kind of NTR? I'm... <laughs> I'm sure we can think <laughs> of something. Better. No, no. I still like it's being called Artemis. Artemis, combine NTR with inflation porn. Oh, Loading. no. <laughs> loading <laughs> so uh, what should take priority the inflation or the NTR would you like ugly bastard with your porn sir <laughs> it just gives you a questioner like NTR beep 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 would you like uh, ugly bastard or big black cock <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> 
Take your choice. Press oh. random to be surprised. <laughs> or alternative, press D <laughs> to combine it's both. A big black <laughs> oh. Revolutionary. Uh. Oh. Second Fleet Actual says Transformers the movie from the 80s still can bring a tear to my eye. It is good. The Commander 248 says But can AI make animations like Transformers? It probably could because the Transformers animation was not very good. Like, because it's very old. It's like 40 years old. Uh, Ikuan248 also says, Kibbs, sound like he would appreciate Ross Scott's Dead Game News YouTube videos. Would you, Kyle? Yep, that's where I responded. You should check out a Curse Farms. He's pretty cool. Good I idea should. on game preservation and preservation of video games. Do it yet. If you don't, you'll die alone and sad. Starting with Artemis. Russ. Make cumflation and TR. What the fuck? I don't even want to know what that is. Like, sometimes... I didn't know what NTR was before I met Arch. Now I do. I don't know what the, the last one is. I don't want to know. I think it has something to do with inflation. No. We're just... I don't even... I don't want to know how those are correlated. <laughs> I don't even want... No, no, hold on. Actually, Artemis, make She-Hulk cumflation and TR. I feel sad inside. I feel... Depressed. <laughs> Mark James says, Banatrauma needs to have torpedoes in it. Most subs have yes. both fore and aft torpedo tubes. Use sonar to aim and guide them. Yeah, well, remote to get di guided fucking torpedoes. I would. I the think they're going to add that. Your sonar only travels for about 10 meters anyway, so... You know. I do believe I do believe they're going to add torpedoes. I'm pretty sure I saw somewhere that they're going to add torpedoes into the game. Torpedoes? That's a bit weird but okay listen firing them at the enemy i mean it's still pretty based when you think about it <laughs> sheldon barfield says a new job now i can catch you guys live no more night shift for me how goes the game development it's still in the soon phase where it's been for the last 10 years you need to stop being mean to me if you actually check out some of the stuff you'll see that it's actually coming pretty quickly hey also artemis finish cal's game for him beep beep done Wow. Wow. You have no idea. I'm going to wrangle your little neck. We're about to go live with the website and start selling no, the no. tabletop it, minis. Would you like to add NTR? Of course. Don't be stupid. The video game's going to be slower than the tabletop, though. There'll be an NTR scene in that, too. I'll make sure of it. You little whore. Sajad. Arch. Female Ogren video when? Never. NTR video first. NTR. <laughs> The Commander 248 says, Kibbs, check your Discord. I sent you Arch's links. Oh, yep, I got him. I got dumbass. him. Arch, this is in the past, you fucking boomer. We did these things already. <laughs> the past and the present, what truly is the difference? Oh my God. Phil the Dark says, Arch. Starlink was a service. Their free month is over. Yes, correct. Fuck them. Uh, Artemis Fowl says, all crypto stands are on suicide watch right now. I fucking see. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to say I told you so, except I told you so. Like, crypto was just an investment and people are like yeah crypto it, it'll great it'll be actual money no it's 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 just an investment and like most bubbles it'll burst and then it burst and well then they were conflated that's gross i wish you hadn't mm. told me that no it conflated i think Artemis, you make crypto ntr I don't even know. I can't even imagine that. Like, my imagination is incapable of conceiving the idea of that. <laughs> oh. Artemis then responds with, Elon Musk says he will continue free Ukrainian Starlink. Oh, well, there you go. I get it now. It's basically what actually happened to the NFTs in real life, where people took screenshots and then posted them. People were unironically getting NTR on Twitter. <laughs> I get it now. Critical Orc Theory, I blame Galadriel for Nord Stream. We saw how that elf can swim. Only she had the means to do it, and that thing bridge, bridge brought it on itself for waking the Balrog. True. Chat, I do not have an NTR problem. NTR has an arch problem. There you go. <laughs> Your little Zontar fucking... says, Buag got triggered when I said Overlord adapted the Femcell arc. To be fair, I don't like Overlord anymore. It's just a kind of a dumb show. I don't like it. It should be ashamed of itself. What's a femcell arc? What does that mean, even? 
Glow in the Dark says AI rings of power equals NPC rings of power. Yes, it, it, it would be preferable. <gasps> Sauron mm. got NTR. That's why he's mad. <laughs> that would make him mad. Mark Shane says that it's already a company that is using the AI to try and download behavior patterns of people to live forever. Oh my god, it's the core. This is the preface to Total Annihilation. Uh, see, the problem is you download your personality, but you're still dead. That's the issue, isn't it? Like, you don't... It, it's literally the, um, the, the teleporter thing from Star Trek. Like, no, they're dead. Because you're, you're still dead. Yeah, like, even if your personality you. is transported into a computer, that's not you. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one like dark horror aspect of the transporters in Star Trek is actually how it works mechanically. Is it deconstructs you on a micro like level to the point where you're broken down and atomized, and then reatomized in a different location. And yeah, that basically means that you're killed. And a clone or a copy of you is rematerialized somewhere else. Now, the whole thing is like, oh, well, your, your information of who you are is stored in the buffer. Yeah, of who I was. I'm dead now. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't care. Like, this, that is a separate entity. Basically, in every Star Trek show, everybody on the crew that ever uses that thing is dead. And it's very morbid when you think about it. And it, it's kind of just one of those things where it's like, that's fucking dark. <laughs> that's fucking... <laughs> Boog says, Bandai Namco made an AI VTuber called Play by Live. Yes, I, I did actually see that. I don't think it's gone actually live yet, as far as I'm aware. But they did make a trailer of it. And basically it would be AI VTubers doing VTuber stuff. And, well, that'll be interesting to see, certainly. Are we talking about, like, real AIs? Like the kids uh, real AI. AI. No, no, real AI, as in it's it's an algorithm doing it. I have a feeling this is going to be a disaster. Or, if it's not a disaster, they're going to highly cur curate it to the absurdum. At the very least, it will almost certainly draw a massive initial audience, just because people are going to be really curious as to what the fuck this is. But just the idea of, like, an AI to interact with is kind of just immediately disillusioning. It's like it's not real. The thing though. is, actually, genuinely, I, I've, I'm thinking about making a video about this too because there are AI chatbots that are yep. really good, yep. and this could be something. This could be the future of, of video games. Like fuck writing out two hundred fifty thousand lines of dialogue, just write an AI. Oh, Arch, have you heard of AI Dungeon before? Yes. Yeah, that one's a silly one. It tries to fucking ERP with you a lot, though. you be like, my character does this, and it's like, you take... It, um, it's like the orcs take off your clothes, like, no, no, not again. <laughs> no, not again. It could be the future video on. games. You could actually have dynamic <laughs> conversations with the, uh, with the characters. That'd be fun, fun, fun. And then you can molest them. Arch is like, Arch NTR's the character. Yeah, it's like, okay. <laughs> you can't NTR a character. There needs to be at least two characters, you dumbass. <clears throat> Artemis Files says, Arch, I sent you a meme in DMs for the artists. Flatmus. Well, send it to Why? me. Come on, Barch. Come on, Barch. Give it over. Come on, come on, guy. Come on. He's a like, poor Ooh. horse abuse by Schenk says, Crazy robot builder man that we demand a robot to breed kibs with. Well, once you've got the AI art set up, you can just tell it to make breed kibs. We don't need any more air with anti. There's already too much. Sheldon Barfield says, Kibbs, ambassador of the king. Chris. Yes. I'm the ambassador. Ambassador Buta. See, that's a guy from Sacrifice. See? Cringe. He's fat, and he wiggles around with his little fingers. Did you know that he was into the Empress? Hmm? I bet you didn't know that, Barch. But you haven't played the game as much as I have. Nope, get out of here. Like, it's mentioned in like one fucking voice line by Zizik. Yep, Zizik's. He tells you random shit about these characters that you'll never ever see them say because they don't actually have enough time to put them on That's screen. That's the thing, Zizik. Uh, actually, I need to make a note of that because I, I still need to do my companions for the future video gaming uh, episode or video, and Zizik is a great example of that. Zizik's. 
Having companions is important. I mean, Red Alert 2 has them too, by the way. Your little advisor no, that pops up. Red Alert up. Has, uh, has hot chicks that go like, ha oh, this, look at me. Commander, the Soviets are attacking. Also, look at my big titties. Like, Hell yeah. <laughs> no one will ever beat Soviet woman from Red Alert 2, though. She yep. was a good woman. The Soviet girl is the best girl. She's got the best look. Yep. No, she was good. I will crush capitalist pigs for Soviet girl, but only Soviet girl. <laughs> but only Soviet girl, yes. The problem with the Red Alert 3 is they turn all of them into sluts. Like, okay, yeah, like, that was a little too allied, much. Allied, um, allied command girl wasn't too bad. Like, she could do with buttoning up. <laughs> like, it was a bit on the nose. That tells you how slutty they look, where it's like, please, woman, close. Oh, God, they ruined Tanya by... Firstly, Tanya's a brunette, oh, and then they turned her blonde. Whore. Too much makeup. That's the thing. Like, Red Alert 3... I actually like Red Alert 3. It's it's actually grown on me over the years because of uh, Tim Curry's fucking acting. Your space! <laughs> the one place that hasn't been corrupt, corrupted by capitalism, if you didn't know. Like, seriously. Um, seriously. Look, look, look at that. Look at that. And tell me that you, you don't want to just reach on over and just like, please, let me just button. There you go. Now you look refined. And, like, having pretty girls is nice, but... Having them, have, see, it was two on the nose. Having, well, there's the thing. There's the thing is, when I'm playing Red Alert, I, in my 13 year old brain, imagine myself being in a relationship with a woman. That's the thing. You, you are trying to offer a relationship with these characters. At the end of the day, as much as you break it down, as much as pathetic as it fucking sounds, that is what you are aiming to do. When you're putting attractive characters in a show, it's for uh, for people to go like, man, I wish that was my girlfriend, basically. Same, same with attractive male characters for women, too. Exact same thing. Mm -hmm. okay. And most people don't want a fucking whore. Yep. It's okay Simple. to have different characters that add, like, variety, because variety is, is the spice of life, as it is. And it also helps to show which characters are stronger and appeals to different people's uh, feels, because everybody likes different characters and the story even if it's like you know like lord of the rings or whatever like some people really like gimli because they like dwarves and other people like legolas because they you know they like little elves because they're weird like that but you know details you into gimli kyle that's fucking creepy i didn't say sexually i like gimli's character what the fuck is wrong with you why must you everything like be gimli about sex sexually ah. well like okay when you when you fucking oh mr warhammer fucking nerd like, at the Emperor, before he was called Neoth, you thought he was a cool character. You liked him. You, without God, a doubt. No. You know, shut the fuck not. up. Yeah, you did. Don't fucking lie to me. Don't you fucking, don't you fucking lie to me. You don't get to, you don't get to deny this. I know I you. Deny. No, you like the Emperor. See, Asian chick was actually a little bit better than allied chick. Because at least Asian chick was just like wearing a dress underneath her sweater. Like, that's more fine. I like that better. Look at him. He's trying to dodge the subject. Like, I've got him pegged here. <laughs> successfully dodged that's not how you dodge a subject that that's is how, how you, you dodge that is and also yes completely and also, yeah, you want to just reach out and but button her jacket just button her blouse up a little bit so like, there you go it's like Look you at were him. looking like a slut thank you this is what happens when we we peg that barge we pegged him good chance dodged. a gamma specter says i'm not gonna lie your excellency i thought you were gonna say artemis make hentai of kyle's game Oh, that's already done. Kyle makes that for himself. He commissions it. No, I don't commission hentai. He commissions game. his characters being railed by a, a ugly guy, BBC. Jesus Christ. Artemis Fowl says, <laughs> Artemis AI is brought to you by DARPA. I don't want it made by DARPA, though. I want it made by some Japanese dude who understands what hentai is. I understand what hentai is. Oh, my God. The Commander 2 for it says, They use the same atoms to remake you for transport when you are transported back. I mean, sure, but the thing is... The, uh, my brain isn't atoms. My brain is electrical signals firing. The moment you tear those apart, my brain no longer my brain. I am simply a collection of electrical signals and chemical responses. Once you rip that apart, me dead. <laughs> me dead. Me gone. Like, how do you transfer consciousness? Like, how do you transfer that? Because consciousness is what we are. And when it when well, your you consciousness ceases and a new one is formed, that new one isn't you. Nope. Because you're gone. I don't want to be put the into the teleporters. Actually, I really like Star Trek. 
you should like it too. Quit fighting it. Like, listen, chat. Arch refuses to like Stargate. I've tried so many times. He will break at some point. Stargate is a really good show. It's U.S. Air Force propaganda, and it's awesome. You will break. You will do what I tell you. You will fucking like it. You will sit down and be like, Kip, thanks a lot for showing me this really great thing, just like you did when I showed you fucking uh, Factorio. And then give it a few months. You'll do exactly what you did with Factorio and be like, you never showed it to me, even though I literally gifted you. I have the receipt that says gifted to Barge. It's like, I gifted you that. You forgot I gifted you that. How dare you? And then you have the audacity to say that you were the one that found it. Also false. <laughs> I did indeed find you little shit. <laughs> Uncle Shen says, an AI that can pass the Turing test will never fail. Thus, fail the Turing test because a human can choose to fail. And an AI that does pass never will. That's retarded, and you should be ashamed of yourself. Mark Shem says, Soviet girl was very sex... Su su sex -s -full? Sex -s -full? sex -s -full? That's a weird word you have invented there, and I don't approve of it. Well, you're going to have to deal with it now. It's there. You're going to have to read it. <laughs> Barch. Barch, are you okay? Barch, make noises. There's a long pause. Okay, that was it. One or two for eight says, wasn't the girl who played the girl in Mandalorian the Soviet girl in the Tim Curry red alert? I don't even fucking know. Was there a girl in the Mandalorian? Uh, probably not oh genie or not genie or what is her name fucking something carmarella no i don't know fucking caramel <laughs> yeah i think it's the same actress she's like a, she used to be a fighty girl in like real life she was also in red alert 3 as the soviet girl in red alert 3 the soviet oh gina carana G yeah gina carana yeah i want a caramel Whatever. <laughs> Princess Luna, or Boog, says, Keeps, play Soma. You scared a cat. He is a scared cat. Play what? Soma. Oh, Soma, that's scary. Also, I need, like, honestly, scary games, they have to have guns or I can't fight back and I stop being scared because I'm so bad at them. I die so many times that I stop. I stop being scared and I start to notice what the AI is doing and see patterns. And I'm like, that's stupid. <laughs> that's stupid. <laughs> And stop being scared and you now also frustrated. i'm stronger than barge because i'm playing through dead space and yes i am screaming yes i am going slow sometimes dead i need space to take scare breaks a scary game because you've got a gun then play it every game that has a gun play is it. not a scary no game. no 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 play it you will play it play i refuse it. to play fucking console trash play it no it's on the pc play it turn up the volume jason graves composition skills are fucking wonderful the sound design oh, in dead space so 3 trash you. is amazing oh, trash you Barge, you can't dismiss games just because you're made of... Barge, I don't care about consoles. Artemis Fowl says, There are Starfleet officers who refuse to use transporters because they know what it does. They only use shuttles because they don't want to die. Ah, the intelligent ones. Yeah, no, there's, they actually acknowledge it in-universe, which is the best part. Like, some characters don't want to, and then some characters get on it and try it, and they're fine with it later because they're dead. <laughs> yep, they're dead. <laughs> And finally, at the end there, before wrapping up, Sujad says Domino Dev was banned from Steam. That is old news, though. Plus, he's a bit of a crazy person. So Who's Domino Dev? Context for the rest of us. No. Yes, now. No. Domino Dev. No. Detail. Speaking of Dev, I caught Dev a while ago in a stream going like, I lie, used to like kids like that, and I pointed it out to him. What? The fuck? Yeah, I have successfully managed to divert Kyle. Now, thank you all very much Tell for watching. Tell me who the guy is. Super generous <laughs> donations. Have a good day. Your horror. Horror. When you're just a little part.